Secured roofing and solar if you're looking for a new roof. Yeah. Sometimes it's an insurance thing. Like your insurance company, you're like, we're not going to insure you anymore with your old roof. I've had that. So talk to Secured. Here's a number to call, 407-986-7663. That's 986-7663. You can get a free roof estimate. Um, also, if there's any damage on your roof, uh, don't go up there and start inspecting it yourself. Also, you don't know what you're looking well, for. There was a story last week of a <laughs> yeah. gentleman who just went up there to do a small repair and fell and uh, is no longer with us. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Also, you yeah, don't even don't know like what the damage looks like. Yeah. There could... Well, what are you looking for? Are you a roofer? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, when I had a hail damage. It's like me when my car breaks down. Yeah. I always open up the engine like I think I know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And w- when I had a, a bunch of hail damage on my roof, like I got up there and I was like, okay. Like I was expecting the shingles oh, to be. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. He got up there. He's wearing a Rasta wig. I'm like, that's really racist, man. You need to get down there. And uh, and I was like, oh, the shingles are still on there. But then Secured came by, inspected it, and there's like, yeah, there's thousands of divots everywhere, <laughs> yeah. and those divots will cause leaks eventually, and then you're going to be yeah, well, screwed. Well, you got hammered, man. The yeah. last thing you need, you would talk about getting your wife mad at you. If your ceiling had collapsed on your boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. you no, wouldn't no, be no, married no. anymore, man. Yeah, it's Secured Roofing and Solar. Give them a call. Again, 407-986-7663. Welcome back to A Corporate Time. Real quick, if you want to join our texting service, text BDM to 844-TOM-IN-DAN. That's 844-866-6326. And once you text BDM, you'll get a return text yep. automatically uh, opting you into our texting service. We do then... not drive you crazy either. No, like no. Once a month, we'll send you really good uh, information on either events that we have going on, special deals on some of the merch that we have. If anything you know happens that you know we think that you can benefit from, we'll let you know. Yeah, it's really like things that you can benefit from that are show-related uh, uh, and you'll get a text. Yes, sir. So, uh, you want to do little emails? Yes, but first, yes. let's. Uh, Ross McCoy is yeah. here. Oh, hey. And um, what are I, you doing? I knew here? I was doing something. <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, tell us about the show on April twenty second. I got a show coming up this Saturday, the twenty second. Uh, one night only in Orlando. It's Nick Pupo's one man show. Nick Pupo from AMC's Halt and Catch Fire uh, from the Goldbergs. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, from this sounds good. I've never heard of it. Daisy Jones and the Six. Oh, oh yes. yeah, Dan was telling you. Yeah, that. is that he the one you're... That's that's the. But I don't believe yeah. that's the one. He's in so much. He's stuff. in a bunch of stuff. I'm looking at his IMDb yeah. right now. Nick is killing, and he's like the sweetest, most intelligent, nicest guy. You'd really, really like him. Follow him on Instagram. But more than uh, more than even that, go to the show. Oh, Hold and Catch Fire. Watch Hold and Catch Fire too. That's a great good show. show. He's good in it. And uh, yeah, one night only. Nick Pupo. It's his one man show. It's going to be at the Bull and Bush uh, this Saturday, the 22nd, 9 p.m. Ten dollars at the door. Uh, a little bit of comedy up front, and then uh, Nick Pupo's one-man show. Love it. Um, let's do some emails. All right. Emails are paper, not voicemails. That's Sam, right. do you have the papers? I have the papers, and right. we finally have the ink. Yes! So, here we oh, go. I sent the other <laughs> ink out. I sent the other ink out, so All we right. should be oh, getting man. $200 back. I assume we have a ton of emails about uh, Tom's take last week on ketamine. <laughs> uh, yeah, the K-hole Tom, they call well, well, I've never done ketamine. Uh, how does it feel? Yeah. One of the oh, few man, things. it feels so <laughs> rapey. <laughs> they, no, I've never done it either. You hear that phrase, K-hole, which makes me think that you just uh, like black out. Yeah. K-hole makes me think of cat misspelled, and then I think of B-hole, and then I say <laughs> K-hole, and then I think of a cat's B-hole <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. That's how weird my brain is. I, a... I remember in high school, there was this guy. His name was Greg. Uh, he's passed Oh, K-hole now. Greg. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't... B-hole. And, <laughs> he worked at the sub shop with us, and he was like, Oh, was he the nail guy? No. Oh, no I think about nail guy. Stories. I think about nail guy all stories. the time. He was like uh, borderline homeless. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people that I feel like are K-homeless. walking the tightrope <laughs> of uh, homelessness. Like, they technically yeah. are not homeless, but Sometimes it's I feel like so we close. are. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm holding on my uh, microphone. Uh. And he used to tell us that when he did ketamine, he'd all of a sudden see in 2D <laughs> for like... <laughs> Flat. For like minutes at a time, and then it would go back to normal. And then I'm like, that is terrifying. That yeah. Like, that kept me away from it. And uh, There's a restaurant here in town where everything is drawn to appear 2D. <laughs> mm. So when you walk in, it like makes you like kind of. It's like you're stepping inside the. Like the aha video. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, all right. Sorry, Sam. Never done ketamine, though. So this is kind of related. Uh, <laughs> Tom needs to get out of his bubble. (laughs) I love you guys. I listen to every single thing you put out, and I listen to semantics. However, 
The stepdads aren't real show made me want to throw my phone through the wall. I am a female version of Tom. I'm logical, and that's the one thing I love about the show. I always see eye to eye with him. A female Tom? That means she shaves it all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't wash any of it. <laughs> but he is a sheltered little puppy that needs to get out of Castleberry. Y'all joke that Castleberry is trashy, but it isn't. Come on down to Polk County, and I can show you some trash. <laughs> Here's the problem I have with Tom's idea that people believe wrestling was real. If he went out and met some people, that are they are not very smart. Honestly, <laughs> there, are, that. <laughs> there are a lot of people that believe wrestling is real just like the flat earthers uh honestly just go out into the world and meet real people (laughs) and they are not smart at all i work in law enforcement and uh every single day we get several people who are scammed normal everyday people get a call and do what they say and lose hundreds of thousands of dollars again normal people (laughs) that work in the community and that you deal with on a daily basis so these people are just not that smart so the answer is just some people are dumb so tell tom he needs to go on a field trip and get out and talk to some people because people are not that bright i know about dumb people (laughs) like uh, but if you remember tom's Mm. very first uh stipulation was he didn't want us to answer with that people are dumb Mm. i was trying to oh yeah you're right right. so i was trying to truth seek uh, where I was like wanted to know, uh, I'm not gonna go back into it, but uh, I was like the because I realized there are dumb people that literally uh, like maybe do, like don't have the IQ to understand what's oh, yeah. going on. But I'm I, right here, man. But <laughs> like uh, I'm talking, I was uh, basically thinking that even if you weren't that educated. That you must have seen some sort of fight. We just need to reframe this into, or, it should be, maybe you just need to reframe this instead of going back into it. Reframe it as if to saying, well, I didn't expect that that many people would believe something that I, to me, seems unbelievable. Well, is right? It, is it Isn't like, that what you're saying? Is yeah. it like belief in everything else that's patently false that they just want to believe? They want like John Cena to be a hero. I think there is so some they, of that. We never addressed that though because it, yeah. like we got into a weird circle talking thing. And we're not going to do it again. No. no, but we didn't even address the aspect of wanting to believe. It. That's only, on a whole another chapter. It's the only thing that makes sense, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, is it wanting to believe it? Mm-hmm. Sure. And I can't separate the wanting to believe something and actually believing it, but I. Wanting to believe something is close enough to some people of believing it, and then it's fine. You know, yeah. I used to uh, crap on people who wanted wanted to believe and believed in nonsense, but um, like then they did that study that proved airborne works when you believe in it. It doesn't. If you're one of those guys, is like, nah, mm. it's just it's just fizzy vitamins. It's not going to do anything. It's yeah. not going to do anything for you. But if you believe that it works, it works Can for I you. Tell you it made me now, hate, that when made I get sick, hate airborne more. Well, it made me. It convinced me. I was like, well, great. I believe it works, and so I, I went. Down, I started, down, I got no, it works. <laughs> no, I got. Yeah, I, I, just, been yeah. sick. I know you don't believe. It's not I gonna do. work. <laughs> I do. It's See, not I, gonna work. I, that's where I get screwed up because I'm somewhere in between you yeah. and Tom. Because right. I absolutely that made me mad at Airborne. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean if I believe it works? The same thing can be said about religion. Oh, they they believed it. And it look at how good their life it worked for my mom. But, nobody can say it didn't work for my mom. Well, it's positive true. thinking works. Like there are things sure. where, like, yes, there are bull ass parts of things, but like. The, w- willing something to happen through manifesting positive thinking, it. manifesting it. it. Like, there is the psychology behind that. And like Ross said, there are studies, scientific proof that your brain can somehow... Not mine. Like, if you believe <laughs> something... or Like, there's been... This has happened with, like... Uh, uh, What's that when you put something in water and the water remembers? What? A pasta. <laughs> oh, no, I know what you're home, talking about. Is it a homeopathic? Homeopathic, yeah. Like, so they're uh, homeo- essential oils like, and stuff. What are you talking yeah, No, I know what, homeopathic I know what talking remedies. About. Yeah. And the reason why there's such we an used, argument. We used to argue with people all the time about right. it. This is dowsing stuff. rods. Yeah, it is. Because, because homeopathic remedies have worked for people because they believed it they worked. They believed that it worked. Now, it's not going to cure cancer, certain, and then some people have been cured by cancer, but that's anomaly weird things, you know, like a rare one sentence Tom Van uh, your immunity correction. <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> so that's what I'm fascinated by because that almost leaking into the supernatural, but it, there is natural uh, reasoning for it, but it's beyond explanation. I'm a firm believer that you have a number of switches inside of you, and you can flip switches inside of you to decide certain things. Like the first time I remember doing it was when I was in a school play and we were backstage and we could hear like the audience 
And I remember getting that butterfly feeling. And I remember it was like so strong and so intense. Like I'm about to go like do a play in front of every, literally everybody I know. And if I mess up, I'm going to be ridiculed for the rest of my high school life. And the butterflies got so intense. I was like, I need to run away. Like I need to get out of here. Like I felt yeah. the f- flight or flight, I you know. Those. And uh, and I remember reaching down inside myself and flipping the switch and saying, you know what? This is just a feeling. And instead of like being aggravated by this feeling, I'm going to decide I enjoy it. I flipped the switch, decided I enjoy it, and 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 ever since then, I've had no problem with like stage fright or anything like oh. that. That that's interesting because like that I, would save me from a lot of panic attacks. I don't even, I don't even know where my switches are. <laughs> I gotta find my yeah, switch. Yeah, I'm looking for my switch. <laughs> I don't think like, stop <laughs> touching your penis. I don't. <laughs> I'm like, well, well, that's not a, there. I guess I don't think everybody could do that. <laughs> no, though. That, I don't no, that's a unique could. ability. No, that is a unique ab- self discipline. No, that is it's controlling your brain. It's also chemicals. meditation. I mean, what you're describing is yeah. no different than what I am told to do when I meditate or when I go to my therapy. Right. My therapist tells me like I have a visual a visualization technique called leaves on a stream, where like the leaf comes down, it lands on the stream, and then I have to manifest these problems going away and breathe and mm-hmm. i mean that's all you're doing is a crude correct t- uh ross version of that just the on off version yeah. of that yeah. i Dude, like that wim hof and other monks and, th- and people can control monks. their body temperature with breathing techniques you know like that's weird that you yeah. could do that you it know what I'm saying? Like, they can sit there and pour gas on themselves and light themselves on the fire <laughs> and just chill <laughs> and just chill out it's, it's like you can control i can't even your... be in traffic so if you weren't doing this, like you start, uh, you know, your fingers start turning black and stuff. Like they literally can keep their like frostbite away with breathing techniques. That's crazy. And so it's like how much your brain can control. I wish Hannah brought up that airborne thing. Rob. That makes me <laughs> mad. Uh- mad. It does make me mad. Just decide it works, Dan, and it'll work for you. And back to this emailer, um, <laughs> because I want to yell at her for a second. Okay, get him, get him, yes. I am trying not to discount things by thinking I'm smarter than other people, because I do think that. <laughs> and it's a flaw. And people, other people think that. I'm joking. I don't think that. I actually think I'm super dumb. You said that like, I, I'm actually surprised no, every day. I'm like, what? The I actually so get, dumb. I, I actually get mad at him doing that because because he's almost backwards manifesting him, no. him being Correct. dumb. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm an idiot. I'm like, no, you're not, dude. Mm-hmm. You come with some but, really goddamn good ideas. Yeah. But this cop's like, oh, well, there's a lot of dumb people. They get, they're they so dumb they don't know. No, just put them in the category as dumb. And I don't want to do that. Because I think everybody, like, there are people that are dumb and smart. But even when, I don't believe that you could just be put in one category as dumb. You may be mm-hmm. ignorant to certain things, but maybe not dumb. You know what I'm saying? What does dumb mean? After school special. And I hate to talk down to this pig that wrote in or whatever, but like, (laughs) I'm sure a lot of the people that you see that get scammed are dumb, but like, there are smart people also get scammed. 100%. These scammers are really good now. And they can, they can get on online and research you and call you up and say your kids are in trouble and stuff like that and, and hit you with stuff that emotionally hooks you in the brain that just goes right past your thinking. You know, the one that gets me every time, Ross, it's the guy and the girl in the jungle and they meet the tribe of uh, elders. They can teach the man. And how to make his penis extraordinarily long. <laughs> I get those, you don't get those emails? And then, but all he has to do is pull the tiger's tooth. No, no, and... I have to send him money and then they'll send me the concoctions. <laughs> oh, send yeah. Me, like the old recipe. Oh, uh, yeah. And if you do really believe there's that many dumb people out there, quit screaming for everybody to vote. Oh. <laughs> because I don't, what are you, what are you trying to do? <laughs> if you believe that many, that segment, there are many people Keep are dumb, yourself. just uh, maybe they shouldn't vote. Dude, uh, if you have to take a test to drive, I think you should have to take a test to vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you want to do another email or voicemail? Um, voicemail. All right, voicemail it is. Tom, Dan, Sam, BDM Mike. So, I think I'm dealing with something right now. I don't know how to what I'm going to do. I think I have a unibrow, and I don't know how to stop having a unibrow. I think we played this one. Medium for life. Love you guys. I didn't I remember like, the I was unibrow. like, just wax it or tweeze it. Oh, like, what What are you supposed to do? Like, is there a... Can you get a surgery for that? Laser hair? Have you yeah. guys ever known anybody that has a unibrow? unibrow? Dude, the laser hair removal, they do them all the time. But the, is that permanent? Well, I don't the know. laser removal, I mean, you read the commercials. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, go, go, calm down, man. Um, uh, no, it's like, yeah, on my back, yeah, I mean, it works. But I always thought, just from doing the commercials, that uh, in, especially when I was doing uh, endorsing Ideal Image, it, it did work on my back permanently. But, like, on your face, I always thought your your face hair is completely different style of follicle. 
I don't know. And I don't think it works the same way. It's the same way that that they have – now they have specific lasers that are for, like, black people or brown people, right? Because you can't use, like, I guess a Caucasian laser on people of darker skin. You might hurt them, you know? I mean, Mm -hmm. like, they have a lot more technology now. But I I don't – Like Band-Aids. I don't think – yeah, exactly. I don't think that face follicles are the same as body hair. Well, follicles. what about the ladies that get their eyebrows like completely removed and then get a eyebrow tattooed? Like they the Whoopi to, Goldberg. Do they have to keep waxing that off like every couple weeks? Yeah, that's or? a great question. Yeah. Or the mustache. Uh, some women have an unfortunate mustache. And, you like, know what's oh. the most unfortunate part of the sometimes when women have uh, an unfortunate mustache is mm. that it, they there's nothing they can do about it, so they have to just let it grow. <laughs> and then they choose. They're well, just like, well, this is me, and I'm just going to uh, let it grow. And they become a lunch lady. I, yeah, I, and they do. <laughs> And, they do, and then they just kind of rock the mustache. It's like the wolf people that you see. They're all over my TikTok, by the way. I don't know if that's in your algorithm, but I have all the wolf people. Speaking of which, I don't know what I typed into where, but I've been getting ads lately for like a little hand size home laser that will remove hair. Yeah, I've seen those. You seen that one? I, I, this, it strikes me as BS, but yeah, you need the big jumbo that they have. Yeah, <laughs> like gotta a, be I huge. want the hadron collider. <laughs> and it's got a, you know what I liked about the ideal image one is that it had like a hydrogen cooling blast that accompanied it. So as they're lasering your hair, it shoots you with like the Ooh. cold blast that they use on like Conor McGregor's uh, legs when he's uh, you know, like, or when a soccer player gets hurt they spray the cold spray on it. Or you get an oil change. Yeah, it's you? like a blast. And it like, so you didn't feel anything. It was a <laughs> You can laser hair removal a unibrow. There you go. Why do we want to still look good once our lives are over? <laughs> oh it's my an issue God. because I'm thinking about myself. Like I am, uh, I'm the negative one, guys. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> I think you look better than you've looked but in a while. I, I keep trying to like. Uh, uh, this may be trying to slip into that old little black dress you bought. When you and Crystal got together. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm uh, like I haven't let myself go. No, you look great. Uh, You're clinging to your youth, and I'm trying to still look good. But for what reason? I still I would like my wife will, won't leave me if I, I mean I don't think you look that good. I, <laughs> is it I don't, I don't think either it because you don't want people clowning you like in the documentary. Are you clowning me? That will happen no matter what. That's true. <laughs> That's common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That won't matter whether I'm, I look like that once a week. <laughs> like, like if if I just let my, you know myself go. Uh, oh, do it! Come on. It would be easier, and Crystal's not going to leave me. I'm not doing it to she might. make it. No, no, she won't. Now that she's seen you be muzzle man. No, no, and no. she looks good too. You know, she, I, she won't leave me for being ugly. I can tell you because you guys know I've just recently lost some weight. Yeah, you look I'm great, looking better than I ever have in my life. And your wife does prefer that. She prefers you to look good. I'll, she does. I'll tell you that. Prefer, but that's. Yeah. A, I mean, that's. I mean, a, I that's prefer, a mild <laughs> that's emotion. <on> <laughs> I mean, like, when I, I go prefer to Mount you, Mushroom, I prefer a mighty meaty. But sometimes <laughs> I get, don't get that. Like you sometimes know how much I get a cheese. You know how much work it is to like, uh, like you know, keep yourself looking yeah. okay. Like it's too much work. But uh, it's for only my wife to prefer. <laughs> like, I'm like not doing that much. Like I could. Do none of the work, and my wife's like, I'd prefer if you look better, but that's uh, that's it. All right. So I, yeah, I you know, live my, like my, this. My wife says, I'd prefer if you drink less. And I'd be like, <laughs> I don't take that into consideration. I've come up with some little goals for myself to keep myself going. Like, uh, I want, like, by, little soccer goals. by August of this year, I want to, like, have some abs. So I can, I'm going to hire a professional photographer. I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to take some, like, pictures of me with abs at the beach and then delete every other picture of me that exists. That's It'll be idea. the only pictures. It's <laughs> a great idea. And then, but that only keeps me going to August. So I needed something beyond that. So I decided I want to get in good enough shape. That I can audition for and get cast in the sexy vampire house at Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> I want to like the. That's a good. Goal. I want to be the vampire with like the shirt off, dancing in the club, fangs yeah. out. Yeah, you know? dude, ab- sexy vampire. Yeah. I think that's a great goal. Yeah. getting abs is a. So hard. That's a feat of. No, it's uh, actually your stomach. Discipline. <laughs> no, <laughs> up here. There it's it like, is. Yeah. Hey, now. I, I, I like that is difficult. Hold on, man. Hold on. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. No, that uh, little vaudeville dance. Yeah, he pulled that, up my, my cane. I, I recently, it's mostly diet, obviously. Like, yeah, yeah. abs, anything you want to look good, it's mostly diet. But I just recently came up with some, uh, I call them protocols. I put together a bunch of exercises that work. Uh, and I, I have ab muscles for the first time in my life. Uh, but get it, like, what do you want to do? Like, stereotypical six pack? Because that's going to be difficult. It, it's there now. 
I, I've got it. I'm telling you. And I do this I do this protocol every day to make sure it stays there. Now I just need to lose like 20 pounds so you can see yeah, well, that's <laughs> yeah. a hard, We yeah. all have abs. You yeah. don't, though. You don't, though. I bump into the fat guy like you every day who's like, I got abs. You're just fat on top of it. No. I'm doing uh, I'm doing plank jacks. I'm doing uh, mountain climbers. I'm doing two weird exercises I got from Tim Ferriss' four-hour body book. I'm doing uh, oh, weighted no like back crunches and like every day. I got abs under my fat. You don't, buddy. You uh, don't. Are you talking to me? I got abs. I got abs. Oh, I got abs. Oh, abs. Oh, abs. Oh, abs. Oh, abs. Oh, I, I'd uh, wager a bet that who could get the abs first? Is it <laughs> me an abs? Are you guys doing an abs off? <laughs> because uh, I need to uh, go on a stricter diet for the. No, I don't know if I can deal God with a hangry dog. This guy will be mad. This guy will be extra I'm mad. I'm hangry all the damn yeah, time. Don't come in here yelling. That's why I'm mad. He's like, I need more muscle milk. <laughs> Ross, I'm coming here mad as hell. How many confrontations did you have? He's like, how many, how many yeah. haven't I had? You, yeah, yeah. you know what? Maybe we should do We're going to ruin our goddamn lives. <laughs> it's you know uh, too hard to do it's that. It's already hard. Hard, you're already just priming like yourself. Some- Seth, <laughs> Seth Petrozelli has abs, he and does. what sure. he has to do is and it's not about the workout, the diet right. is you know insane. Yeah, I, I didn't used to say this, but I will say this now. When I look at him, and I hope he doesn't get mad at me for saying this, he looks amazing, right? He looks great. But he also looks miserable. <laughs> well, that's his brain. His brain is miserable. <laughs> well, yeah, well, right? We, you, yeah. We need to cheer him up. He's miserable. Beautiful girlfriend, beautiful house, cars, Never motorcycles. Enough. No, no, no. I think he like he's uh, he's fine. You think like, he's fine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think he'd be happy? Do you think he'd be happier fat? Could we get him fat? Make him happy? He'll never be fat. No, no. It's a mental uh, yeah. uh, thing. He just but, looks yeah, so sad. He can't. Ne- he can't ever like stop working out. He's addicted to it. Like the, the guys. You, if you're good or the best at anything, you're addicted to that thing. You oh, know, he's like, definitely yeah, addicted. He's the most been, successful well, now, or whatever. The, now he's but, been doing it for twenty years, right? The most successful stand-ups are addicted to it, right, Rob? Yeah, no, they would yeah. never stop doing it. Yeah, yeah. Though, Eddie Murphy being the exception. He was the best at one point and then just said, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he, Steve Martin, same thing. You know what's sad about the Eddie Murphy thing is now he... He won't admit he likes change wrestling. He can't, <laughs> he can't ever get back into it no. without people always comparing him to what he was 30 years ago. Disagree. Well, disagree. No? Cause like all, king now, right? It, when you like hear comics on podcasts, it comes up all the time. Like, I wish Eddie Murphy would get back in again. Uh, like, people who hang out. I think, like, Jay Farrow, I heard an interview with, like, he hangs out with him. He's just as funny as he ever was, he says, and he could get back to it, like, right today. Yeah, but being yeah, Jay did say that when he was in here, but I just don't see that ever happening. You think he could get together and act uh, an hour and be just as? Why would good? he? He's a movie star and he's got all the money in the world. Why would he ever do it again? I see Morgan's doing the, it. The, 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 <laughs> that guy's addicted. I, I, yeah, so I maybe Eddie that. Murphy's not addicted. I don't think so. I don't think he is either. Okay. The Jonah Hill movie that he is in, I will say, oh, I Eddie Murphy that. is like the worst part of it. Oh, really? He's really? just kind of got like a. He's kind of corny. It's like, like you, when you see him, you're kind of like, uh, man, I'm not sure I like the way you're playing this. Hmm. He's playing like a sort of a militant black guy, you know, like a more of a um, more of a like um, black and proud style father, but t- with like an edge. You kind of hate Jonah Hill, hello, cool Jane toys, and isn't giving him a chance, kind of a thing. And it's just not. It doesn't. It just. He's almost too lovable for the the guy he was playing. He's okay. supposed to be playing like some like Black Panther. Like you know, and it's just like you. Every time you see him, you're like you're Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Murphy, right? Sure. Yeah. He's all. How old is Eddie Murphy now? Got to be sixty five. D- damn near seventy. No, is the seventy years old? I mean, the nineties were. A million 62. years ago? 62. 62. Like, he is a 62-year-old man. I know that, uh, like, it seems younger now than we're in our 40s, but... Well, he's younger he, just by being Eddie Murphy. True, but he's not. He's biologically 62 years old, and that... When's uh, he going to get back into a singing career? Never. No, yeah. Mm, he's yeah. done. So, mm-hmm. at 62... He's you, pretty decent singer. Yeah. Like, you're not even as good of a chess player because of your age. Like, there's... Uh, there, you, you, good. You know, I don't even like chess. Well, I'm just saying, like, uh, so you can't be as good as you were when you were 25. And so, no matter what, something's going to be a little bit off at 62. Yeah. Trying yeah, to but you anything. can be as good once as you ever were. <laughs> that be key. Yeah. <laughs> um, welcome back to A Corporate Time. Um, a couple things. If you want to join our texting service, uh, just text BDM to 844-866-6326, and you can uh, you know, be opted into our texting service, which will text you 
uh, important things that are coming up, new merch, things like that, just any information that we deem pertinent to you. Also, uh, a big thanks to our brand new plumbing sponsor, yeah, yeah. Uh, Modern Plumbing Industries, uh, modernpi.com. And uh, we've been looking for a uh, plumber sponsor for uh, a little while. God, and, yeah, I, I needed know. this two weeks I ago. Know. We're like, we just missed it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, Sam had to replace her hot water heater. <laughs> yeah, oh, but it's perfect man. for modern plumbing. I, I it's hard for uh, for me. It was hard to get any plumbers to call us back or to show up. Some of them just wouldn't even show up. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, not so, modern. Oh, get yeah. right. modernpi.com. Get on them. Also, ten percent off if you mention your Tom and Dan. What listener. money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love me yeah, some yeah, money yeah. off. Yeah, so 100%. if I say Tom and Dan to modern plumbing, they're and, gonna hook me up. And they're big enough to cover all of Central Florida. If you look at their range they're of. Pretty Big. Yeah, they have a, a lot Big of Big pipes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thanks to Modern Plumbing Industries. I'm excited about that. Um, all right. I have a job for them uh, at our house, so I will be calling them maybe today. What uh, Should we do some voicemails? Yeah, we could do some voicemails. I got a couple of them. Um, let's go with this one right here. Hello, Tom, Dan, and Sam. Zach from Longwood here. Um, longtime listener, 15 years I pretty much only listen to the BDM and OG shows. So I'm yeah, this guy only listens to BDM and OG shows. I flagged oh. this. I thought it was very, very, very interesting. This is this geyser story from Tom. And just to establish some credibility here, uh, I've been golfing since I was like 10 years old. Played some competitive youth golf. Played on my high school golf team. Even considered uh, going to play golf in college and have professional golf management as my uh, major, um, but after seeing the, the rampant alcoholism from a local club pro uh, when I got a job there in high school, I decided to change course. That was one of my favorite parts of this uh, <laughs> email, too, is that he saw a local golf pro be a big pink face dum dum, mm. and man, I knew a guy, the pro at a course grow when I was growing up. I remember seeing him there because he would do classes during the day and then just walk into the clubhouse and drink when he wasn't doing classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of the perfect job. Uh, also, golf. Uh, uh, it's a drinking sport. It's a drink. Yeah, harder to drink when you're playing soccer. Correct. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, yeah, it you're is. too much running. It is. Uh, but we're, with a lot of golf, you know, golf's a lot of uh, driving in a car, yeah, uh, standing there, yeah, around, hit, driving the car, take yeah. a couple sips in my career. But I wanted to come to Tom's defense on the geyser issue. These sprinkler heads and the golf courses, man. Those those are designed and built to be run over by golf carts. Boom. And while I would agree that, you know, traditionally you're not, I guess, really supposed to go off the cart near the tee box, uh, it happens all the time. Uh, this is a faulty <laughs> sprinkler oh, head. Uh, we'll end it right there. But basically, this is what right. I was saying. Finally, somebody that had some golf knowledge. Yeah, I yeah. thought about calling our friend Drew, Drew Garabo in Tampa, because Drew still golfs all the time. Yeah, yeah. And say, like, <laughs> could you please tell Tom that he did not do this? You know, I... Well, you did not do this. There, I was surprised about this one. I think it's I got a lot of now. people more. Uh, they were on my side. I got emails from people. They're like, first, they're like, I've never heard of this. Some people are like, uh, this must have been... Like you I, must I'm have been the it's last. A prank. I got an email literally last night that explained why this person believes that this. I must have just been unlucky enough to be the last straw that broke the main pipe. He's like, someone must have been hitting this over Maybe and over. Maybe previously damaged. Or previously yeah. damaged, and you just months. you just moved it, and because. No, I just, you know, uh, he did say, yeah, technically you're not supposed to pull over there, but it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of what I was saying, is that, like, everybody that likes to be like, hey, not on the side, no mm-hmm. I'm like, you can say that, but let's step, take a step back into reality of what actually happens. But it all breaks down to why did it happen to me? Oh, Dan Reed is calling <laughs> us. Do we want to take it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's take it. What line? What line? Line two. Line two. This will be for next Tuesday, so the Craft oh, to Land Festival oh, today. Yeah, picking up, oh, we're picking up the line, picking it up hot on the line with us right Right now from Cafe Da Vinci, it's Dan Reed. What's going on, man? Whoa, caller number nine, what's the phrase that pays? <laughs> <laughs> what's shaking, man? How you been? How's everything at Cafe Da Vinci to land? It's great, man. It's great. It's 
it's just cruising right along. It's, I can't believe it's April already. Well, you're kind of making us look good. I've been getting a lot of feedback from friends of mine that have been going and having date nights at your venue. And uh, yeah, you make us look good, man. You have, I think, you have one of the more romantic and intimate, like, pretty spots that you can go see a show. Yeah. Are we still talking about Cafe Convention? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I just, lo- I love that bar, man. I think it's a great spot. Well, Dan, uh, with uh, we, technically this particular segment we're recording is for after the Land Craft Beer Week <laughs> because we. <laughs> And, uh, our stupid schedule <laughs> is all over the place. We're always recording in the future. And then, but so we p- plugged Craft Beer Week uh, during the we s- segment that we originally had planned. Uh, I'm just telling you so that when we start talking about Craft Beer Week, it's like it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, except for yeah, the people on Twitch yeah, uh, that too. are listening. Yeah, yeah. we yeah, do yeah. have people that are listening live. So tell us, are you guys gearing up for uh, what? This is the 14th. Annual craft beer? Oh, my God. I think this is the 14th annual. Uh, yeah, we're gearing up for that this weekend. It's this Saturday. Uh, for the people on Twitch, I'll tell you this. There's still some tickets available. Nice. There's VIP and there's general admission. The VIP is 70 bucks. That gets you in most notably an hour early, so it gets you in at noon. Good. And uh, it gets you a swag bag. You get a free four-pack of beer. Who knows what's in the bag? I sure don't. <laughs> and then general admission is 40 bucks, and that's from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And we'll have live music at Cafe Da Vinci throughout the beer festival. And, uh, you know, it's a great time for a great cause. It and, is uh, great. It's, local downtown. it's one of my more favorite ones. That, uh, the first time that I was a, uh, ever able to attend, I actually just happened upon it by accident. And was like, yep, let's snag some tickets and get on in there. So uh, over 200 beers from what I was reading that you can imbibe and, and, and try. And like Dan said, live music at Cafe Da Vinci. Do you know uh, what bands you have playing? Will Trufonic be playing at all? But not True Phonic. True Phonic will actually be next Saturday. They'll be closing out the uh, Delanda Palooza. What? Oh, Delanda Palooza. Uh, what is Delanda Palooza? Palooza. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a music festival. We do them twice a year. So in November we have the Delanda Original Music Festival, and then Delanda Palooza is kind of you don't necessarily have to be an original band. Oh, well, that's very cool, man. Yeah, and, and so, that's our, kind of our spring festival. Yeah, and so for our friends that love Trufonic, because they're a damn good band, you can go see them close out the Delanda Palooza Festival. Dan, yeah, I... Yeah, they'll go, they'll go on at uh, 11 o'clock that night, and they will be on until 1 a.m. Good, loud. I love it. So, Dan, I got an odd and question I... for you. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, I'm curious. I just thought of this. So you've talked to a lot of bands throughout the years, correct? And uh, because Cafe Da Vinci books, uh, I mean, a lot of awesome uh, local bands, touring bands, they, yeah. they, they come through Cafe Da Vinci They've a lot. They've had pretty much anybody you can think of. And there's uh, usually, unless the band has a outside manager or a promoter, uh, and maybe they, they're because that's a, they're a little bit bigger, um, one of the band members is acts as kind of their manager usually when they start off, right? Like booking yeah. and yeah, typically. So I'm curious: is there any is there any I guess a stereotype or uh, like one uh, member more than the others that tends to be the manager of the band? Oh, like, so you mean the, like I work with lead, only bass players, or, or like the the lead singer or the drummer usually is the manager? Uh, like a is, lot of times it's the drummer. <laughs> yeah, I was about yeah. to say that the drummer, drummer and, and bass player and the supervillains. Yeah, I know yeah that. ends up being the man because the front. I feel like they made the singers more artistic and more like of a like a character. And yeah. Maybe less of a businessman. The, the drummer. guitarist is super reserved. I don't know. Said, I don't know. Is, yeah, is there I a... think if I put it together and made a list, I think just off the top of my head, the singer is usually the guy you talk to um, about you know payment and, and that sort of thing, and they do the booking. Or the lead guitar is a real close second. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, that the singer does make sense. So the front man of the band face is usually the, the face, and yeah. then want to be have probably more control with the business side of it. Uh, but yeah. Sam's right. Like the drummer, I I found that like uh, maybe this because like super villains or uh, cash, just, out. cash Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's maybe true. Like reggae and reggae is a yeah. drummer. Yeah, in reggae, it's the rhythm section is <laughs> taking care of things. So Dan, anything else going on at Cafe Da Vinci uh, coming up? Uh, you know, we got well. I- I can talk about two things because one was just announced today and one was announced last week. So I'll start with the one that was announced today. 
you know what? I'm going to go to the one that was last week because the one that's down today is really big. Okay. Last week announced on July 27th, cashed out, finally making a return to Cafe Da Vinci. Oh, those guys are right. great. Issues. Right, awesome. love them. Yep, we love those guys too. Got to work with them at our uh, at our Land Cruise. Uh, great band. So everybody should go check yeah, them out. I might awesome. go to that. You want to go? Yeah, because we I've been playing you a lot of cast out on my boat. Oh, uh, so good. Like it's my yeah. it's our number one boat. Oh, it's great soundtrack that we when we're going up to St. John's is cashed out. Oh, so good, so good. <laughs> right. Right, when is that? Perfect. That is going to be July twenty seventh. Okay. And announced today. Actually, might be announced in 15 minutes officially. I think they announced them at noon, but I'll go ahead and say it now. You heard it here first. All right. July 13th, Julian Marley at Cafe Da Vinci. Whoa, wow. Julian Marley, man. I, I I swear to God, I dated a girl that like absolutely loved him and yeah, had yeah, like yeah. all of his <laughs> records out of the family. That was like her favorite. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool, man. Well, I mean, well, that's... July is shaping up. Yeah, that's certainly something to be uh, excited about. You guys are going to have all the fun summer vibes at Cafe Da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. Lord. Well, Dan... What it feels like. Thanks so much for calling in. We appreciate the sponsorship. Yep. Of course, uh, go by Cafe Da Vinci, grab a pint glass. You still have some, Dan? You know, I got the, I got about a box left. Okay, Ooh, sure. All right, head over there. Yeah, head by, grab one, grab a beer, and see some awesome, yeah. awesome bands. Check it out and, and enjoy one of our favorite venues. Dan, thank you so much for the time, man, and uh, good luck with everything. We'll see you in July, okay? Appreciate you, fellas. Take care. All right, all right man. Be down. good. That is Dan Reed from Cafe Da Vinci Deland. Um I love when we have sponsors that are also like the owner of the place and we could talk to and have a relationship with it. Just, you know, it feels more like, you know, like the picture Real. we have of me and uh, your dad and my dad shaking hands. <laughs> at a yeah, it is. Yeah. It's more of just regular Florida business yeah, yeah. Old, uh, deal. Uh, well, I mean, I was going to say for us more, like we're the trashy guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get the word out, yeah. man. It's fine with dealing with corporations and, and marketing agencies and things like that. But yeah. it, there's this more corporate. This is the old fashioned. Uh, you own Cafe Da Vinci's? <laughs> we own TND Media. We'll talk about Shake it. Shake on it. Yeah, yeah. I want to see Julian Marley. I'm trying to think of the song that there was a song that he did that I really, really loved back in the day. I'm going to have to go back through and find the. the How album. many different Marleys are still performing? Uh, Damien. Yeah, yeah. Julian. Probably a bunch more that we just are uh, less. Uh, popular, e, e, probably. You know, I'm sure there's. Like, I don't want to mess this up. A bro- well, like, Sam, look it up. A lot of Marleys probably went into the music business and make money off that somehow. Well, right? Is Damien? Who was Junior Gong? That's what. It, that's what his dad. His dad was Bob Marley, and his dad called him Junior Gong. Okay. Because you remember Bob Marley's brand was Tough Gong. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I, I'm blanking on all the names. I used to be way more into reggae, <clears throat> pardon me, and more, way more into, like, at least Bob Marley. I m- remember reading his, uh, remember the book Legend? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. they had the CD that came out at the same time. It was kind of like his biography and everything. I read it cover to cover. Oh, and man. There's a, okay. Uh, we got it's a lot. Kaimani, Mar- Julian, Ziggy, Damien, Ziggy. and Steven. Okay. I forgot Steven and Ziggy. Uh, I think those were all the sons. Ziggy's one of my favorites, too. Rita Marley Rita. was his wife. Yeah, oh, she, she was, she was, she was she singing was with music. the Wailers. Yep, yeah, she was in music. Uh, she would sing in the Wailers. See. Because just from if you are born with that name, like it's you, like being born Bob Dylan's son Jacob Dylan from you know the Wallflowers or something. Like right? you have to. Sharon Marley was a part of Ziggy Marley and the Melody Makers. All right. You should try to make money off of it because it is it's an advantage to you. Uh, Sadella so. Marley um, started, or she is the CEO of a record label. Good lord! And, like you can't and just has a clothing line. Go into owning a, a, a Marley pinch used tire. <laughs> Why not? Why can't you? Well, I guess for uh, yeah, if you do own something, you got to call it Marley something. Like you can't just go and like, never and use your name. <laughs> Bambata Marley. Bombata? Mm-hmm. He's That's the eldest name. son of Ziggy Marley. He plays music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, now you're getting into Joe the Mercer kids. Joe Mercer Marley. Yeah, it's the all, the gran- all the grandchildren yeah. are in music, too. Good for them. Because yeah. you're leaving some money. Skip mo- Marley. You're leaving money <laughs> on the table if you don't go into the music business somehow because uh, of the name. Like, you know. What if it, you don't have any talent? 
find some way to use your name, like go, go start selling musical. I equipment would like to see or something. You if know, I a were a Marley, I would open up a Just Puppies. Yeah, <laughs> Marley's Just Marley's. <laughs> just, no, Marley's Just uh, Puppies. You know, you may want to go with... Marley's Harley's. So Mar- Harley's. I get to Harley's. Marley's Harley's. Yeah, well, the demographic is... <laughs> you you got a little off. You're going to go into reggae-themed... Okay. Go I, don't wanna, I don't want to do your gotta stupid reggae. No, you got to go reggae no. ball. you got to go something. I don't want to... You know what? Yeah. Back to your pinch penny idea. I'm going to open up just a regular old pool shack. Uh, well, uh, Marley's pool cleaning. I guess... Uh, oh, you know what I want to open up? Relaxed, huh? You know what I saw the other day that I was like, oh my God, what a great name. I saw a pool. It's a place where you go and you play pool, and they sell pool cues and pool tables, and it's called, ready, (laughs) Qphoria. And I literally stopped in my car, pulled over, and (laughs) cried a tear when I was like, I go, Qphoria. That's amazing. Will you guys help me start a small business? <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? I don't, know. Do we doing right I, don't now? Know. I don't know. You but... don't know what this is, but you want to start a new one. He wants one. to abandon this one. No, it's kind of no, like no. me when I'm playing Minecraft. I say, I'm trashing all. Let's start over. Start no, over. no, this is fine. And okay. then the D and D marketing is fine. Marley's Harley's. Um, but I just like I'm want to start another small business under what the kind of business? How about Marley's Cockchutery? <laughs> <laughs> well, what do we sell? The uh, Fairvilla Cockchutery plate. Okay, all right. Well, do we yeah. pr- we produce them or no, just no, buy them no, wholesale? We just buy them wholesale from the Canadian company. Right, well, that's what Fairvilla does. <laughs> okay, like, like, let's just buy. What if do- we compete against Fairvilla <laughs> and open up Marley's, Marley Villa? Marley Villa. <laughs> well, we need one of the Marleys to go in business with. We're, like, we'll, we just have to use their name. we'll just lie and well, say Julian's coming. Them. They'll yeah. sue us. July, They'll us. sue us. Bill Marley. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like I, I want to dip my toe into some other. Don't business. talk about toes and Marley. <laughs> okay, let's think about it. We have we yeah. have. I thought we had T and D marketing, which is kind of a, an arm of the Air T and D. That's not a small business. Yeah, yeah, but that's running itself, and uh, now I'm bored of. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know, there's nothing else to do. I'm glad you're being honest about it. Like, uh, you know, like a. Uh, Dice, uh, this, well, the reason I saw this, yeah, I saw I Dice Man in here the other day, I and he's, he's always got a new company. He's always mo- he's got a ten new companies all the time. I need to give him the feedback. He has a new company. Can I talk about it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think so. I, he I has don't a know. new company. Can you buy it yet? And then, like, he has like some. It's a hydration company. Yeah, it's like a drink. Yeah, and he has three flavors: lemon lime, berry blast, and strawberry banana. And uh, Berry Blast was very, my daughter says, very good. Yeah. Strawberry Banana, she said, was disgusting. No. <laughs> she said it was horrible. It, it's, um... Where, uh, where Tracy, it? write that down. <laughs> 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 What's the, uh... What? Strawberry Banana is a no-go. But Berry Blast was approved. No, it's called, I. Uh, what is it called? Uh, um, it's called, uh, Instant Ivy. Instant, instant Ivy. ivy. Yeah, yeah. MyInstantIvy.com. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's brilliant. Uh, it that's is brilliant. A, uh, because we need this, something crazy. like this. Marley's Instant... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, we can't take it. It'll sell yeah, us. No, it, it, it's we're, be no a, we're just saying a blank. He doesn't own the word Marley. We're, we're making our mascot's name is Marley. Uh-huh. And he's like a li- it'll be like a little dehydrated guy, right? He's like, yum yeah, on. Yeah, Marley's <laughs> IVs? Oh, all right, write that down. <laughs> yeah, Marley, yeah. <laughs> John oh. Bob, what's another Bob? Robert Marley's? But we don't. It's too hard to make the powders and all that. I don't know anything about we'll that. Buy, uh, we need, <laughs> let's just buy kratom. We need. Let's just buy kratom and put it in the. <laughs> oh, we open a smoke shop. Let's just. Oh, smoke they're shop. everywhere. I, I've always wanted to open up a good old smoke shop. What do you want? You want a puffco? What do you need? A five eighteen battery? Because I feel like they are legal you need a drug rig? dealers. They're selling like fringe drugs in yeah, there. Yeah. And that's like kratom you know, and I'm all this like close to. Qu- I'm this the, close to quitting Delta this 9? stupid show and start t- selling Delta Nine. Out of my house. Yeah, well, Can make we, more money. Was open TND smoke shop and then uh, vape cards. Marley's stuff. smoke shop. Can we make it less trashy? <laughs> Why the, are they all upscale smoke shop? Every time yeah. I walk into Why a are smoke they shop next to a rim store, I put up my collar <laughs> like, like I'm shaking. You know, <laughs> it's always next to a rent a rim. <laughs> A lot of lights, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of, like, turn off your, uh, you got too many LEDs in here. Why are you always in the back? Stand in front of the counter. Why are you yeah. always in the back? And it's like, do Gotta we need prepared. so many glass cases? <laughs> what? God, why is it a jewelry yeah, shop? It smells like uh, patchouli and tapestries <laughs> in here. 
yeah, yeah. So dusty. And you're you're hanging all your products on a cork board behind you, like uh, it's some sort of uh, county fair, and you're like, these are the prizes. Don't, like you put out all the <laughs> what bong, is it? you put out all the bongs, and because you can't call them bong, you put them all away at night. No, just leave them out. <laughs> you know, too much work. Uh, all right, we need another. How much does a smoke shop make? A lot. Um, but everybody. There's so many. Okay, of can them. I just say something? Everybody in the smoke shop looks sad. <laughs> They look sad. I don't. I can't. Their job is name one. Name one. one person that you've ever saw in a smoke shop that was like fired up to be there. They're well, all they're high. high. <laughs> they're <laughs> all sad. They're all they're on so, drugs. They're all very sad. <laughs> but, uh, I think a lot of times they don't even know if you're in there. You know the one over here. They're too high. When yeah, I bought a bong, sad, they're high. I bought a bong, a, a vog bong, bog, vog, vlog. I forget the name of it. I bought some expensive, um, like name brand. Bong. Well, it was black glass, and then in the center it was clear, and it has the tubes. It's got the crazy tubes in it that suck the water up, and then it's got the ice pinches. It's got all these features I don't need. It's got all these fancy things that the kids like. And I bought it, and the guy, I stood, I swear to God, I stood in there for like a half an hour before the guy even knew I was there when I wanted to buy it. In the store, hello, hello. You know, like he's over there, like counting money, staring at the wall. I, I got it. Tom and Dan. I back in the late nineties. Uh, I remember a lot more paintball stores around. Oh, I just watched how those were made on how it's made the other night. Uh, but what, paintball guns or paintballs? Paintballs. Oh, okay. Um, seems pretty. Uh, how are they made? Just like uh, the have the ball mold. We should and change this it. show to the audio version <laughs> of how it's made, where we watch how it's made and then we tell you it. Like, well, it's on Tubi. Oh, 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 poorly, dude. It's on Tubi. You got to check it out. Tubi rules. Are you on Tubi yet? Uh, uh, no. Get on I only Tubi. watch Tubi. I only watch shows that are from like 1972 to 19 or two, 2016. <laughs> I think the latest I've gone is like 2004. <laughs> it's great. It's all free, right? Yeah, I started, started watching a documentary that they they. Suggested it in the BDM uh, in the BDM yeah. group, and it's called Daytona Bike Week Exposed. Oh yes, it's from 2003. Wacky Jack, Wacky Jack, he's the host of it. As you know, the, do you know who the main host is? He dead? Yeah, Wacky Jack, he's the side host. He's the, uh, he's he puts uh, Bud Lights on women's boobs and gets their nipples hard, and then he uses his mouth. In the video. And then, and you know who the main host is? And he's a big fat slob, Wacky Jacket. And you know who the main host is? Jen from Jenna Tortures. Really? Yeah, and she's got on like a Nazi helmet and long, like yellow <laughs> braids or whatever, you know, like she's in the, she's, got, she's got like the Marilyn Manson, you know, like the, I'm a, I'm in the, I'm a, I'm a Nazi uh, soldier yeah, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I use a Nazi typewriter helmet. You know, it's like, it's not the helmet, it's the hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm an officer. And she's got that. She's walking the streets of Daytona, and there's girls just flashing their boobs everywhere. This is from 2003. You could not do this now. <laughs> it is called Daytona Bike Week Exposed, and I sat there. I watched it with my daughter last night. No, I watched it by myself. <laughs> Was the footage from, like, 2000? Yes. It's, okay. it's all high sides, but the amount of nudity in it is so gratuitous that it makes girls go wild. It would make girls go wild blush. And that, Wacky Jackie is... There's not it, that much nudity, and right, anymore. Not anymore. On, like, like, I mean, on porno sites, sure. No, but no, on, no, I'm talking about end Daytona Bike Week. It just happened. I don't know. Not like it I don't think it. Be, I don't no. think there is. There were girls in this video. Sam, let me just set the scene. This girl walks up to Wacky Jackie. He's holding a can of Bud Light. And he's like, he just blatantly says, hey, let me see those things. And then she pulls him out, and then he puts the beer on him, and he's like, hey, they're getting hard. You know, he's doing that kind of thing. And then he's like, how about a little peck? Oh. No, no. And she's <laughs> like, and she, and she's like, go ahead. You know, like, and, and they're filming it. And they're filming it, and he's just, blah, 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 and he's like doing the thing. And then she's like, oh, my God. And then she pulls him out again for, like, other guys. And they're all lining up, and I'm like, what am I watching? I was like, this. <laughs> Daytona in the 90s. This was, this 2000s. is, it is, like, if you went to Daytona, if you played that and said this, this is Daytona. People be like, "No, it's not." I don't believe you. <laughs> That's how it used to be. Not uh, anymore. And he had bleach tips and a, uh, like a dragonfly flame shirt on, <laughs> and his sunglasses, white sunglasses. He was kind of like a Guy Fieri looking you, dude. Yeah. Do you know anybody who goes to Bike Week? My dad loved. My dad yeah, loved. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, bike yeah. Week. But yeah. like currently, no. I see Cactus Steve's out there. No, <laughs> That's the only I mean, one I know. I don't think he went out there this. No, no. He's got he got a lot went. of health problems. Uh, yeah, he does have a lot of health problems. The I, last thing I saw on the BDM page was he said. That he is traveling with his wife, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and he's supporting her, and that he is bored, and because he can't drink, and he wants to kill himself. No, come on. That's <laughs> what he said. <laughs> he said, he said, said, if, I, he he said, said if, I, if I continue down this road, I'm going to off myself. No, no. Just, he did call you out, though, in a thread, Tom, yeah, saying no, how no, Tom's like, gay. No, he does things like, by himself, and everybody should be able to. Yeah, no, I saw. He's, yeah. a, he, uh, he, he's a super nice guy. Um, although well, That'll make it all better. Welcome back to a corporate time. Uh oh. Oh, he's struggling oh, to get it out. Oh, God, don't cry. A lot of recording. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we've been doing a lot of recording today. Hey, we have a guest on the line. This is really, really cool. And I know Samantha, our producer. Uh, actually, Sam, I'm going to give you credit. You turned me on to these guys. Yeah. Because I didn't know who these guys were, and I very much enjoy their music. And on the line with us right now, we have uh, a lot. We have everybody, right? Or do we have everybody from the band? Almost. We're missing, we're missing one dude. We got who- Dylan, Tristan, Madeline, and Mitch from the band Flip Turn. Flip Turn is on the line with us. What's up, Flip Turn? How are you guys? Doing good. Doing pretty well. good. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Oh, anytime. Congratulations on being on the lineup for the Gasparilla Music Festival, which is huge. I think uh, the main headliner that sticks out in my mind is Run the Jewels. And then uh, the two people we only wanted to talk to were really you and Run the <laughs> yeah. Jewels. And so we got you. And this is great <laughs> because we think you guys are awesome. But, uh, but how did... How did you guys become a band in 15, 2015, 2016, and then now get on this amazing lineup and, and, and make your way here? Because it seems like you guys haven't been doing this for very long, have you? Um, I guess it's year seven now, which is kind of Oh, nuts. longer than I thought. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, y'all. Well, we're, <laughs> we're old men, so yeah. even seven years to us is not even... Oh, yeah. My <laughs> daughter's seven years, so seven years <laughs> is a lifetime to me. <laughs> but yeah, oh. how, how did you guys decide to put together the band Flip Turn? Yeah, um, we started when we were just seniors in high school, and we're all just a bunch of music lovers, really. We're, we're from a really small town in Florida called um, Bernardina Beach. Yes. It's a little beach town, coastal beach town. Um, and no one was really starting bands or anything. We didn't know anyone that was like in bands, but we all loved kind of the same type of indie alternative music. And I think we're just kind of drawn to each other in that way. And we're like, why can't, you know, we'll, we'll give it a shot, even if it's just learning covers in the garage or, you know, whatever, just playing music together would be really cool. And so we started and, then we started writing original music and just kind of kept with it and played a couple shows and caught the bug and couldn't stop. So. Now, and I was watching other interviews this morning to try and get prepared for you guys. And who who is it whose mother is the Irish fiddle player? Uh, it's my mom. Is that yeah. is that Tristan? Is that? Dylan. Dylan, oh, Dylan, 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 sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, and Tom and I were laughing a little bit because you said something in an interview that, that I was laughing at. You were talking about how your mom would take you around in like in, in, in Florida and you would play with her in bars. And I, yeah. too, I, too, from a small town in, in Florida called Deland, I was in bands when I was little. T- like, I remember being like 13, 14, 15, playing drums in punk rock bands in bars. And it yeah, is and in Florida. You can't do that in other states, really. It's really Florida that you're allowed to be that young and in bars playing music. Yeah, anything goes. It, it definitely is a Florida thing. You know, I'd like to think that we get a lot of hate, but we also we're very good at getting young people in bars to play music. We're, bring your kids. Yeah, to bring your kids to, to play Florida drums and play drums and bars, and then you'll get these amazing. Look how look at them. Don't you want your kids, your yeah, two yeah. sons, and my I, daughter? If listen, my daughter I came the- to me like Madeline and came to me and said, "I want to play bass in a rock band." And oh. w- will you let me play in bars? I'm going to say, hell yeah, we live in Florida. Let's do it. <laughs> but do you like a, a couple other things that you guys are th- that, you know, I caught from uh, uh, this other interview I was watching, which is far better than this one that we're doing right now is that uh, no, I'm joking, is that you guys um, y- you you knew what you you were all music lovers. But then we have now two of the guys in the band are we're both playing in a, a church band or a youth group band. I think I, I think I, I was one of them. That that's kind of how I got my start. Um, it was basically just a big social thing for all yeah. our friends after school, and there was an opening for a bass spot. Um, so I was like, I'll 
I'll, I'll learn. And then, yeah, that's kind of... I did that as well. Like, church to me, I'd go in my youth group and play the drums. It's funny how <laughs> these are these are inherent Florida musician things, as you have to play in bars and you have to play at your church youth group. But, um, yes, Tom, well, question for Flip Turn. Um, I'm curious, to because you guys started around 2015 ish and uh, around like at that time what's the mentality of the path to get to where you want to be because we always talk about this and we interview um you know bands that when we grew up in the 90s or whatever when we knew bands like all right here's the path to success you tour you know you get enough money to tour and then you tour locally and you start gaining recognition then you you know you you move on from there and start doing out of state touring and stuff, and it was pre-internet, pre-social media. There was a way to do it, and then internet and social media changed everything. And I'm curious, in 2015, what was your path to to your own success or your goals? Uh, what did that entail? I that's a great question. I think we've always had the mindset of just playing as much as we possibly can to get in front of as many people as possible. Um, I know when we first started, we just wanted to. We played shows all the time. Like, so we, we started at the tail end of our senior year. And so we really kind of like got playing a lot when we were in college uh, at University of Florida. So played all the time at different clubs around town and just really word of mouth was our like main thing. I, I would text people all the time and be like, Hey, like I met you this one time, but I'm in a band, bring your friends, come to a show, whatever. Um, and then, yeah, obviously trying to build up that social media aspect, trying to navigate that. Um, we really didn't know, I guess, until college started meeting other bands, but we were just always kind of had the mindset as well of just paving our own path and doing what has felt right for us in the moment. Yeah, because um, <clears throat> when you're like getting in front of the most amount of people, because nowadays social media makes it so much easier it to get more the eyes field for sure yeah it, but also like you know it was never an option to like all right we could have million if we you know hit a viral video or something or our music gets p- taken by tiktok or whatever to use and it's like all of a sudden now you can get millions of people to yeah. hear which was never a, really an opportunity unless you could sign on a label or something or got on the radio in the past so i just wondered if like your mindset included social media marketing where it's like all right we're going to tour yeah. and word of mouth but we're also going to try to get some viral video or sure. music out in yeah. social media do you guys actively take that into consideration when you're doing things or or no um I would say no. Um, I guess. Uh, yeah. So yeah. We, we kind of, like, to an extent, like, we we're, know we're on social media, yeah. but it's because our generation just is used to it. I like that. No, I think that's a good I, answer. I, I, because I, I'm glad you said that because I just envisioned like all new bands starting, and I say new, but within the past five years or whatever, yeah. I just assumed that they all had some like social media and the social media promotion like in the uh, like uh, the satchel of what they needed to do to become popular. It's like tour, yeah. social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like I these thought, guys seem very like I, I'm gonna pay you a compliment. I, I think you guys seem very old school and very traditional to me and the way that your band kind of came together to me is very organic and like i don't know for lack of a, a different term it's um analog versus like digital kind of kind of feeling and i like that because as a musician myself i gravitate more to that kind of stuff what is was there a defining moment that you guys knew I mean, you're grinding away, you're writing songs, you're trying to play in front of as many people as humanly possible. Putting out EPs yeah, all the time. Yeah, you're, you're doing this, you're, you're text, like you said, you're texting people like, hey, I met you this one time, you know, or giving them music, here, check this out. What, was there a defining moment where all of you kind of looked at each other and said like, yo, we ha- this is, now this is our path, like this is our career now. Can you think of a time when the light bulb went off and you knew it? Hmm. I, would, I would say... Um, maybe not like re- complete career mindset yet, but I know our very first like real venue show that we played in Gainesville was like the summer before we started college. After that show, we're all like, okay, we got to keep doing this. Like this needs to be a priority. Um, but I think the career shift mindset, because I think we're all, we were all still in school, just trying sure, to balance sure. both. Yeah. Our junior year of college, we're like, okay, like, 
I music in the band is what we really want to do um, for our job and for a career, whatever that may look like and whatever sacrifices we need to make to do that. Um, I think it's just junior year. I know you moved to Gainesville, um, kind of trying to finish our degrees or dropping out. Um, right. Whatever, you know, fit right for the person and <laughs> just, I think. Do you, yeah. Did everybody, yeah. what, what did everybody choose to do? Because I, I mean, I will say that I, to do radio, which I'm not doing it now, but I kind of am. I dropped out of UCF, and then I went back 19 years later and finished my degree. Do you ever think any of you that might have dropped out, no judgment, because I did and I didn't, you ever, do you think you'll ever go back? <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame you, man. Well, you started looking at it. Yeah, we, I don't blame I only listen, did because they my... they sold out two shows of Red Rocks. They're not going yeah, back. No, no, I know. My mom was an educator. I only went back because my mom was a teacher. I understand. I think, that's what, I think this is the most honest band we've had on our line before. <laughs> Yeah, you guys have good answers, man. <laughs> but you you learn to start looking at what college is for. It's for to figure out what your what your passion right. is and what you're you going to do are for a living. It out already. But it's like you already figured it out. Yeah. Just go. There's no, no reason to go backward. To like right. get some sort of degree that is what going to help you. With, you're already doing Let it. Let me ask you guys this: Has there been <laughs> because you're 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 writing so much music, performing, you're actively in a a music lane? Have there been musicians or people, maybe famous people? or musicians that you admire that maybe have let you know that they listen to your work? Have you had any instances maybe where you guys are flying past each other, where you got to have access or meet somebody that maybe you looked up to or value in the music community? Yeah, a little bit, um, which still blows my mind, you know. Um, for me, I guess it like it doesn't matter, like Instagram like is whatever. Yeah. But um, Hannah Hooper from Group Love followed me on Instagram and she's always been a huge, huge inspiration for mine. Like I have been to so many group love shows growing up in like high school. Um, I saw them so many times and I've always just thought they're amazing. So that's even, cool. I was like, maybe if it was an accident, you know, whatever, yeah. but I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> anybody else have like access to anybody that they, they've liked. I also heard you in an interview say that y- you were inspired by the bassist. What is it? Silver sun pickups bassist. Um, yes. I, you know, I followed her. No follow back. Yet, oh, but it- <laughs> my God. That's stinger. A lot of, it is a stinger. I, everybody, I, I, nobody follows me. I, I got am. nobody famous. <laughs> follow, Carrot Top maybe follows me. I don't even know how to tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's how old he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so dumb. I was like, I don't even know Hey, if I'm, who I'm following and who's following me. So, uh, hey, good luck with Gasparilla. We know you're going to crush it. Any new plans for any new music? Because I know you guys, you guys record a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, we're we're in the writing process right now. We've been kind of hashing out um, some ideas and just really kind of in that beginning stages of working on album number two. We'll see. There you go. Awesome. Well, congratulations, guys. We really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and chat for just a little bit. Um, we know you're going to crush it at the Gasparilla Music Festival. Get your tickets at GMF. Oh, what was the other part of it? Uh, just search uh, Gasparilla. Gasparilla music. GMFtickets.com. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you search Gasparilla, it's going to show up. You know, you <laughs> saved your oldness. You're not old anymore. Guys, thanks so much. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you guys so much. All right. Bye, y'all. Take care. That is Flip Turn live from what appeared to be their mother's uh, kitchen. Oh, imagine being it's like an RV or <clears throat> something, right? It was nice. Young again, oh. you had the whole life in front of you. Uh, the, your, they're so your sweet. Career they all were exce- smiling. Yeah, they're all sweet and they're all there prepared and so sweet. Who knows what your career will be? You know, it's like I a, don't even it, think they like party or no, drink. I think they're just about I the think music. They're sweet no, angel no. babies. They're about the music. They make good music. I want my daughter to be her. Just a sweet little bass player in a rock band. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, even getting to this point is uh, is statistically impossible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they did it. Like yeah. they really were like yeah. word of mouth. Yep. They're, they have uh, a very loyal fan base. Like you go to their shows and everybody's singing every single word. Yeah, yeah. And they're always sold out. I like it, those kind of bands. It's like it seems, and we've talked to who was the other uh, band? Uh, the the acronym, the band O A R O A R. The <laughs> that band N W A. Was it? I was N W A. You can tell I have no idea who anybody is. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll admit it. I don't know who Flipper is. Uh, I'm not cool. I'm a dumb old man. 
um, that hasn't listened to any new music since high school, which was the 90s. Uh, so anyway, um, but... Uh, Did it hurt your feelings when they said they were seniors in high school in 2015? It didn't it hurt, hurt my feelings. <laughs> no, that stuff doesn't hurt my feelings, but it does make me go, oh. It, yeah. I do a whoosh. <clears throat> well, just realize uh, how old it, it, the clock at the liquor store that tells you when people can buy booze. That hurts my feelings. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's your see you're like, what? 2003? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever that was. 2002? 2000s. Uh, yeah. But yeah, crazy. Um, I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh. <laughs> The bands, I remember now, the bands that are somehow organically get an audience that is super engaged and willing to follow them yeah. and like, no, like... The, Dude, ICP did that. It, yeah. You know, it's um, it seems like... OAR is one of those bands. Grateful Dead is one of those bands. Fish is one of those bands. You could cultivate Dave it. Dave Matthews band. But I feel like it comes organically and then they learn to cultivate it. it like, they didn't make it happen. Jelly Roll is kind of one of those bands. Yeah, like the, just their music and the way that people interpret their art caused that to happen, which I, is cool. I think right? a lot of it's real, though. Like when you see these guys in interviews or even the interview that we just showed you, right? You watch that and you're like, oh, they're just real. Yeah, you yeah. know, there's no, there's really no, you know, what you see is what you get. And those are the guys and they're going to play the music and it's very authentic. Yeah. And yeah. It's very real and genuine. And I think maybe, do you think that that. Is that an energy that you can put in your music? Just an energy. I know you're not. This isn't really where you like to go. It's something that I can't quantify. Can you put that energy into your music? And then, because again, it's a whole experience, and then play it for people. And then they're out there watching it, and then they feel that energy, and they're like, oh, these guys are real. And that just builds over time. Is that a thing? It's something more than that, because I imagine that a lot of bands are real, and a lot of bands uh, put out. You know, good it, music, good music, and talent. They're talented. Like we've known uh, lots of them, but it never was able to get that organic, diehard audience. And I don't know what that is. And I'm sure no one really knows. It's probably a, a million different things combined that caused it to happen. But when it does happen, yeah, it's like man, this this will. You could do a career off of this. Like, your followers may follow you until you decide not to do this yeah. anymore, which is cool. Most bands don't have that. Right. right. No, like, that's true. You that's have to, true. And maybe they all, to a certain extent, have your diehards, but some are, you know, when, you, when people are willing to travel yeah. and follow you, like, you just have a bigger group of them, and that's when you know you're secure. Yeah, for sure. Um, oh, speaking of uh, social media, I got my Twitter account back. Hey, oh. how'd you get your Twitter account back? I, I Twitter emailed me and <gasps> said uh, they wrote you back. Oh yeah, 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 Musk yeah. wrote you back. I did. Elon wrote you back and himself. They're, and they're like, "I'm sorry, this was a mistake. Carry on." And turned back Car- on. They said, "Carry on." <laughs> <laughs> it was well, Elon. Wow. They said some sort of version of that, and I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "I did not expect this <laughs> That's happen." Pretty cool. Um, and uh, that, so you uh, got on there. Oh, you tweet crazy now. No, never did anything. <laughs> I went on there and I was like, oh, I never use this anyway. Got it back. Didn't even need it. Um, but that, I, like, I would have bet heavily against that yeah, they would ever too. just randomly. And it wasn't even our buddy or anything. It was just Twitter, email me That's back. That's unheard where they of. They were doing their job. They've never done their job. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was weird. I was like I was like, how did this happen? Like, and it was just from the I filled out the thing and I was like, I don't know what happened. And then I don't submit know. and then they email me back. They're like, they're like we don't know either. They're like, Dear God, give this disabled man his Twitter account back. <laughs> what happened is I believe it was because of my uh, my Your media pre- the intense media pressure you put on Twitter from our show. <laughs> the uh, because I have it hooked into my Instagram, it's only getting those yeah. as the tweets. So I looked back and I hadn't tweeted anything just through Twitter in a long Probably time. Like in years. And I think it just caught some sort of uh, software's uh, red flag. And yeah, then they, it was like, this is a bot or this hasn't been inactive. used. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this they, is they said it was inaccurately flagged as a spam account. Huh. And, oh, there you go. and they said it was a mistake and we turned it back on. Carry on. Um, Two girls, one cup. I wanted to say, like, everybody said this has never happened, so you guys are not doing a good job, obviously, because (laughs) your reputation... I'm the one. Yeah, your reputation was that this will never happen. People are like, good luck, you'll never get it. And it happened. You know what? I would said some pretty disparaging things about you. Yeah, I take them all back now. <laughs> you know, you're the good one. I, uh, I, you know, you would think that. Uh, I guess they can't determine whether it was uh, 
by accident or not, unless an actual human looked at it. Right. So they need to get the AI better. Actually, pretty fast. I think yeah. yours, yours went pretty quick. It, it, it was, was like a two weeks. Yeah, it was weak. Yeah, it was weeks. So uh, it wasn't that quick, but uh, I thought it. You know, it would it would take either months or never, never. happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't think it would ever happen. Congrats. I don't even like again. It, no, I, I wasn't know, even uh, that. But you got it back. I mean, it's better than keeping it. God you know. It. Also, what I have happened? Tom wins again. Oh, I, I thought he was taking <laughs> his sandals off again. You were looking over there. I was like, is he taking his sandals? Oh, off? there's doo doo on yeah, the desk. Yeah, what happened to your doo doo sandals? Did you clean them out? You the, forgot, didn't you? These are. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> you I, let it harden and then you chipped it out. No, I just I forgot that I had doo doo on them and then I started walking around everywhere and then it rubbed <laughs> off. <laughs> not here, but at my house. Oh yeah, and, not here. Sure, my house and other places. <laughs> I, I, I was like, oh, I got the doo doo and. I looked and there was no doo doo. So I was like, I must have just tracked it oh off. Oh my God, you doo dooed everywhere. <laughs> Where did you go on Friday? Oh, uh, it wasn't dry when I left because I left early oh, to you go. went to the movies. No, I put it in. Oh, the... can we get to talk about that? Yeah, we, we got time to talk about Mario. Yeah, you, uh, you hated it, didn't you? No, it was good. It was good. I heard it's amazing. It was good. Although... Are there any innuendos at all in it? Because they got to be careful, right? I was thinking, Not really. I had this discussion with Andrew. I was like, of any movie, any children's movie, that one's going to be squeaky clean because it has to be. Because I don't think Nintendo screws around with that kind of stuff. No, but I mean, they had jokes. It was not just for kids, kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, a, it was a, And they incorporated 80s music into it, which it told me they were like a tip of the cap to... The children of the '80s who played this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I don't know if they did that on yeah. purpose, but I yeah, it was all on purpose. It's probably yeah. like, hey, we'll incorporate some '80s music. There's hundreds or... of Easter eggs supposedly yeah. in it. Like, yeah, there's people trying to figure out all of them, and somebody said it's virtually impossible. They hid so much stuff in this movie. Although, did you I... stay till the end of the credits? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. my, all my sons, they stay at the end of every movie now because uh, Marvel has made yeah. that. It, I used to like that as them... a kid. Yeah, but but they'll stay to the end of the movies that don't have, and I'll try to I'll just tell them I'm like they they don't do this in this movie. Yeah. That's only Marvel and some I'm other. You know, what taught me, you know what taught me that? Smokey and the Bandit because it always had the outtakes at the end with Dom DeLuise. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was always Dom DeLuise and Burt Reynolds, and they like Dom DeLuise and Burt Reynolds would get to doing like riffing and improv. Yeah, yeah. And then they'd lose control and start laughing, and they just let it. And I loved gag reels as a kid. I was like, it's it, this is the real stuff. I, I I will say though, um, if I was going to choose uh, pure entertainment for adults, uh, Sonic or this Mario movie, I may choose Sonic Whoa. only because it has <clears throat> actual people live, live action. action. And oh, there's not even <clears throat> they don't sneak a human in here at all or no, anything. It's pure animation. Okay. Yeah, it's just gotcha. all animation. And um, and but the story, great. Uh, it's you know, it's all good. Um, and my sons, uh, <clears throat> Tommy liked Mario better uh, than Sonic, and uh, Max said they were even. Uh, that was that was a report back from them. Wow! I would say if pure adult wise, you and Tommy disagreed on something. I, yeah. Holy moly! I no only because he's a child, and I think because I like it just he looking at. What do you think of more. Detective Pikachu? Detective P- Pikachu never saw Pikachu. Saw, oh, Detective Pikachu is good. I uh, I think my kids. I only watch it. kids movies, don't I? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm a child. <laughs> I mean, you don't watch any movies, uh, really. Uh, sometimes I've been trying to trying to watch. Them. I'm watching a lot of baseball. I'm like an old man. As soon as I get home, big inning comes up four p.m. <laughs> I put baseball. I go four p.m. to yeah, ten p.m. That. Baseball, sun up to sundown, <laughs> yeah, and I'm is. crushing it in my baseball league. Yeah. I'm eighteen and zero. Wow. I'm 18 and 0 in my league. The first two weeks, I have swept my opponents. I'm literally grinding their faces in the dirt. These stupid firefighters didn't know what they were getting into when they asked the little old podcaster to come in there. And now I'm in there and I'm kicking helmets. You know what drives me crazy? Firefighter helmets. <clears throat> when you tell me this, is I want to know what strategy you've learned. I told you my strategy. Don't it. tell my strategy. <laughs> well, there's no strategy. Yo, you told me it was a no. strategy this morning. No. You were just lying to me. We're just copying off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's not strategy. <laughs> because it's not interesting to me. I, I need to know you found out something. This is what I'm no, doing. No, I don't find it's out It's like anything. a fantasy football. No, whatever. I just look on the internet and do what everybody else is doing, and I win. Yeah. I, well, well, that's then it's, what everyone does. Well, it's random. No, some people, like, I take my fantasy football, I actually, there's strategy yeah, involved. You lose every year. Who's well, the of course only I do. champion? <laughs> I'm the only champion. Oh, then it's random willy nilly. And you gotta put you gotta put my name on the trophy. Uh-oh. Uh oh. 
No, well, that happens during the. It's coming up. The, no, we got that's in September. You know, August. I want it in August. I don't want it late. I want it gets presented to you at the draft of the, the next year, and then I keep it the whole season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, you, yeah you, you are the current champion. Yes, I am. That's what I we like did last you, time. I like to hear you say it. Yeah. Well, Who's the current champion? I'm the current champion. <laughs> Stupid Bryce Hall getting his <laughs> knee blown out. What the? Why don't these players get like the pre? Like the uh, Tommy John surgery. When you get Tommy John, the, you then you have robot arms. When you're a teen, and basically the community knows that they this should guys Robo-comp, go to the big show. Robocop everybody. Just take their, uh, redo their knees them, as give a them the teen. Pistorius. <laughs> give them the Pistorius. Yeah, no, not the Pistorius. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, I want the blades. I want robot arms. I want laser eyes. Just give them two cadaver Sonic. ACL MCLs <laughs> so that it doesn't burst. You get to choose the cadaver? I don't know how it works. I'm Serious just saying, question. Redo if you them. put a female cadaver part in a male, can you do that? It's weaker. Well, that's that's what I was going to ask. That's a serious question. I was going to ask if it's weaker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sorry, my man. ACL is on its period. <laughs> um, that's stupid. Uh, oh, no. What do you want to do? Oh, no. um, you want to do some voicemails here? No, we could do, we could just leave. Oh. <laughs> could just, do you want to leave? Do you want to leave the recorder on? We could just leave. Just let the <laughs> other, just walk out. The other half of the show. Oh, walk out. Oh, yeah, gonna walk out. Will it still trigger? No. Some sort of alarm. No, no. I turned that off. No, no. There's some radio. No, I told alarm. Jack to turn that off. Uh, that they they leave it on. Well, it was killing my pregnant pauses. <laughs> I'm trying to bring back the old Shannon Burke pregnant pause where you were like, "Oh my God, what happened?" And he was like, "Oh, there he is." <laughs> He's he was doing it on purpose. I, no, I don't think he was I doing it on know. purpose. I think it was just his, like, the cadence of his voice. Oh, okay. There'd be, like, some dead air, and then you go back. An unusually yeah. long pause. Yeah, there'd be, like, a pause. Well, and people do like, that. Oh. Yeah, it makes you lean in. Yeah, right? it's and like, hold on. Yeah, I just wish it was too loud. <laughs> Who's got a fan on in there? <laughs> That's Who pooped? Somebody hey, pooped because yeah, yeah. the fan's on. I can hear it. The, no, it's the, uh, is it the bathroom fan? Let's hear it. That's the ice so. machine. I don't know. I can't tell. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, we got to talk about the ice machine. Well, it hasn't been cleaned yeah, in a long time. Oh, that's what God. I want to talk about. And the whole tube, the yeah, cleaning all... tube is blacked. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, blacked yeah, yeah, yeah. I eat that ice every I know day. you do. But I think it makes me stronger. That's <laughs> why you're coughing up phlegm every day. No, it's like no, you got to get a big old <laughs> cup of black mold ice and make you strong. <laughs> that's what your boys need. Yeah, Three yeah, pieces yeah. of black mold ice before they go to bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, right? It's a, either you're fine or you're not. Well, what am I supposed to do with it? Because, like, it's a closed system. You can't clean it fully without flushing you vinegar. You take the whole or... thing apart, right? No, there's nothing. There's, like, what do I do? If you clean it, it'll break. Like, sand yeah. water heater. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you so can. what do I do with it? Never do the maintenance. Nothing. No, have you taken the jug out? When you take the jug out, that whole bottom, it's got a film on it. Oh, yeah, no, no. It's slimy. That's fine. Just it's leave. got a slime. It's <laughs> got, like, a slime. dolphin slime on it. Leave the slime. As long as the ice is uh, kind of white, I'll eat Kind it. of white. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of white. It's kind of black. Yeah, yeah. It's, as long as it doesn't have, like, a little uh, mold specs. It's got mold specs in it. I think it does. Not the ice, just the reservoir. Well, the ice, everything. you can't see it. The mold specs are in there. As long as I can't see it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> All right. If I can't see it, it doesn't exist. And I know I'm not going to get a check to buy a new one. Hell no. I know. Yeah. Well, that was, that like, was, what, was like $700. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do I fix well, you it? Well, said, you said that would never need to be cleaned. No, Butler said that. I that's never true. said oh. that. <laughs> you don't get us confused. That's the most it. insulting thing you could say to me. Oh, what do man. I do? Well, call Butler. Ask him. All right. Let's get out of here. Bye bye. Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha, our producer, is here. Hello, Sam. Hello. Hey, guys. Go to TomandDan.com and sign up to be a BDM. Um, We have tons of BDM members, and we would like for you to join. I had a couple guys reach out to me uh, this morning that said, Hey, man, haven't been a BDM. I'm going to be a 1095 BDM because I like the show a lot. I said, Hey, I appreciate you doing that. And you can go there. There's this thing called the love meter, and you can pretty much pick and choose, uh, you know, kind of what you want to gift the show. You get extra shows. You get behind-the-scenes shows, intimate shows. You get extra events. um, You get um, all the perks. Well, speaking of that, um, it's BDM Appreciation Week, 
Uh, we started this last year, and it was you know, our a way huge to, success. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Everybody, everyone loved it. It's no complaints. Well, the, what's funny is that like you would think from the first year we started it, we did it. I would say success. Tons of complaints. This year we're in the oh, middle of it. We lost medium. People are yeah, uh, we mad lost enough to lost money, lost medium. They're like we appreciation. Did. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> and then so then this year, I mean, Tom, what did we do last year? You want to recap? Recap. No, I want to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> I'll just talk about what we did yesterday. We do have a guest in studio yeah. with us. I love this guy from the Two Moofs podcast, and you probably know him from basically now. Everybody's seen the drone racing. Yeah, you know, so they know that you do that, ladies and gentlemen, from the Two Moofs podcast. And he's a drone man. It is our good friend Kenny Samson. Hey, so I'm also a BDM. I don't know if that is a good selling point or not. No, that's a good. Uh, that's a great selling point. Right. I didn't see your name yesterday when uh, for oh, the five dollar yeah. shirt. Yeah, did you order a five dollar shirt? No, I didn't want to. I don't want to lose you guys' money. No, I said all. a real hero. I said all. No, you, <laughs> <per person. laughs> you only said one order. Per um, you said order them one time, okay. and then the rest of the time you screamed, well, "Don't order a second one for your wife." <laughs> no, well, I okay. I got it figured out for next year, but uh-huh. anyway. that's what you said last year. <laughs> but this well, year, that's what he says every year. Yeah. Every year, it's figured no, out. No, no, no. I, I came in this morning. I said I figured it I out. I think on we the drive killed I think we killed Eric. No, he's. Fine. Okay? Just, yesterday was one of the hardest days. Sore. Yesterday was God one of the damn. hardest days ever. This guy came in wearing his brace. I came in just popping pain pills. It, I think what happens is he says, I figured it out after, but like the day after. But then you have he forgets, 363 right. days right. No, till the next time you he have to do it again. Down. Yeah, the whole chat room, there's tons of people in there saying, I didn't order because I didn't want to add to the chaos. No, oh no my I God. said Great order job. It. Great promotion. And they're lying because I'm It no. was chaos. No, you <laughs> said <laughs> order there's it. There's and then too you, many orders. You we said, were swimming in shirts. You said <laughs> order. It was never ending. And then you, Still not done. On it was like Scrooge McDuck swimming in shirts. You yelled at people that constantly yelled at people. Well, like you're yelling I started at freaking me now. out at the time. You got to start <laughs> well, freaking out. Well, man. you can't have it both ways. You can't say order the shirt, then freak out, tell everybody not order the shirt, and then rewrite history by saying I never said that. I said order it because <laughs> they have the receipts. And then uh, you're yelling at them. No, no, I didn't. I didn't ever said don't order it. I just freaked out. I didn't, <laughs> look at this, look at and this. you interpreted that I as I will one. help. I didn't order one. I didn't order one. Oh, what the hell? EJ <laughs> says Tom yelled in my face. No, uh, for real. Well, no that was shirt unrelated. for Kara. I ordered double because he said not. Okay, there you go. Yeah, there, there it is. is. There that it is. I, I like that. Guy. <laughs> thank you for your service. Only the D heads win. That's <laughs> that, that's the lesson. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, thank you to some of our sponsors: Fair Villa, Megastore, uh, BudDocs.org, dot yes, sir, American Air and Heat, uh, DetailCG.com, our contractor sponsor, uh, Pyrospot Fireworks for sponsoring the cruise we're yes. giving away at the appreciation event uh, Saturday. Yes. Uh, if you don't know about that uh, and you are a BDM, um, reach out to other BDMs. Yeah. Or go on the BDM Facebook page. Or, or just, you can email me. Just email. Show we'll at TomandAnn.com. But we send every BDM an invite for you and a guest to go to these BDM now, events. Now, we realize that emails, you know, addresses, some of you, you know, oh, I signed up with that. I don't have access. Look, we'll work it out. It'll all be fine. Don't freak out. I've had multiple people email me and say, hey, I'm not on Facebook. I don't have... We can work it out. Show at TomandAnn.com. Get at us. We'll work it out. And all sounds of, like farts in here. We're we're <laughs> going to talk about all this on Friday. Uh, but I will say this: um, it's interesting the psychology behind going into a new job and then it being fun at first. I know we're all excited. We're like, oh, this is like a this factory. Is great. <laughs> we're, I never said. I never said this is fun. <laughs> said, I did say did. this is like a no, factory. I heard you say <laughs> well, you that. No, I know. I that's why I know. It's not no, fun. no. You should have warned us. I, I heard did. Samantha say this is a fun factory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working in the yeah, fun yeah, factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, let's get a mini pony. <laughs> um, so anyway. I'm big black. <laughs> oh, R.I.P. I was like, I love a monotonous, never have to think about a job. Just stuff the envelope. Like this, all, this, I, this, all this, I did stuff, was fold. This, this, I this. didn't take another yeah, job. Yeah. Eight a, hours of straight folding. I'm a simple man. I, I just stood for like eight to nine and yeah, yeah. only folded. Oh, yeah. Um, How many shirts do you think I folded? I should have counted. I should have had a clicker. Well, we know how 400? many 400? Do you think I folded 400 shirts? No, more than that, uh, I think, because... Uh, I was a fold I mean, machine. I did a lot, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got there late, Tom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it Friday. Can two, I tell you what happened? Dozen. It would, two dozen. Would you be surprised to know that maybe I passed his truck when I was driving in, and he was just sitting there like a government <gasps> worker? 
Kind of, no. you know, killing time and drinking <laughs> coffee at the Wawa. I saw you. I knew it. I saw oh. you. You know why I know? You have a just call Mo Magnet on your gas tank. It's undeniable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Mo put that on there. Yeah, so he can find you. He told me, he's like, I'm going to put this magnet on his gas tank so you can see what he's cheating and like doing things he shouldn't do. It's a low-tech tracker. I'm not it joking. Is. It's like the worst Apple AirTag. I've thought multiple times about taking it off, but <laughs> I then thought, what if Mo saw that I took yeah. it off and he gets mad? That's the so overthink. Leave it That's on. the crazy <laughs> overthink. That's what makes him the extra crazy. What thinking... if Mo sees I removed the the peeling magnet <laughs> off of my gas At least tank. replace it with a uh, new well, one. See, I thought he was going to say, if I remove it, I'm not going to know which one my truck is. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's <laughs> true. Do you think Mo would see that and did, uh, like... Text you and be like, uh, call me. He thinks it's a possibility. That's you think why Mo would text yeah. you and be like, call me now. And then you're like, oh, hey, what's up, Mo? And, uh, and you're like, you knew. You knew what he was going about. Is this about the magnet? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... But maybe if he saw it, he's like, why do you take it off? Is there something off, wrong? Man? Like, uh, he's want to promote me? I'm a big sponsor, so you what don't the hell? You want to promote me? Hey, 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 promote you do good me. for my magnet. <laughs> like, I, that all goes through my head. And then I'm like, I'll just leave it on forever. <laughs> Um, anyway, how you doing, Kenny? Yeah, what's up, <laughs> um, Kenny? Uh, so uh, I'll talk about the XFL because a hot topic. Yeah, going yeah, on yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. But I, I will say, to talk to you about it's uh, a couple weeks ago. I did go to MegaCon, which was uh, really nice. Yeah, uh, Mega guy. and uh, got to meet Henry Winkler, who plays the Fonz. He was on uh, the, in the Water Boy on Barry. Yeah, uh, and you know, I think my dad thought Henry Winkler was gay. Okay. It's all right. <laughs> is he? Let I don't tacky? think so. I don't think he is. Oh, okay. But I think my dad thought he is was. Is he married? Well, okay. So he has was... he ever been married? I think so. I think he has kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think he has kids. Yeah, okay. But I'm just. I'm just. I don't that know. It was just a random gay. fact in my brain. I was like, I think my dad thought Henry Winkler was. Gay. I think it's because he's traditional stage actor. I think that's how he started. Yeah. So maybe yeah. he's like. He's got uh, the juice, man. That guy. Is... Well, he's a great actor. Oh, he's so. Like, isn't he like super? Be- I mean, okay. for all of us, don't we look at him and we're like, ah, oh, we love that guy. And I think it also has to do. He is genuinely one of the nicest celebrities I've ever met. So one of my friends uh, wanted to see him, and and she was like, "Hey, you want to get in the photo with me?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Hey. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and and when we get there, Winkler. he does the thing where he introduces himself to you as if you don't know who he is. He goes, "Oh, hi, I'm Henry." I'm nice. Henry Winkler. He's like, "Hi, I'm Henry. That's nice what to meet nice you." Nice guys what's... do. And he's like, "Humble." And he's like, "What's your name?" You know. And he, and even though I know he's never going to remember it, like after I introduce myself, he goes, "Oh, Kenny, thank you so very much for you know coming uh, and, and saying hey." That guy's awesome. And and. It was great, and then I, I you know, made a comment because uh, I was like, "Hey, I'm excited about the final season of Barry." And he goes, "You know, I'm so happy that to hear that we have fans that really love it. You know, this was a, a really unique opportunity." And Your was... cadence for him is perfect, by the way. That <laughs> yeah. is how we talk. Oh, it is exactly. He's, how he's we're exciting, talking. and it's like an uplifting kind of a conversation. Chat room is weighing and saying that they had the exact same experience. Yeah, he, so, yeah. everyone else, especially with those photo opportunities and autograph sessions, they're like, "Okay, sign and go, sign and go, click." And then if you give a compliment, they're like, "Oh, okay, thanks." But with him, he spent the time to talk to you and want to get to know you even mm. though he won't remember but you know what i mean you don't like, know that you don't know uh, that well, sometimes right. there's these, you know? uh, these these anomaly guys that we've had it in here where people come in they shower us the compliments they leave and we're like dude adele gibbons remembered we gave her a straw yeah, that's true uh, <laughs> yeah. she still wears it. i'm gonna go out on a limb and i'm gonna say that winkler's been doing it so long and is so good and so authentic that if he may not because he's up at age but yeah. i i'm gonna think he would he would I'm going to think he would. He may not know Kenny, but he'd be like Orlando or yeah. I Barry think he's or... probably going to remember. It's like you know what? I remember this pleasant interaction. Yeah, yeah but you're right. Yeah, because you I think he's authentic. He was really cool. He's, that's rad. He is mentally ill. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a like, Yeah, that's a thing. He's too nice yeah. to the point where I bet his hands are like, like <laughs> hurry it up, Fonz. <laughs> Come yeah, on, yeah. Jesus. It's uh, you don't need to be this nice. Yeah. Uh, over. Think about the time period he's been famous. Since the Fonz, yeah. when the hell was that show on? 80s. Yeah, like this guy has been famous, like really famous, really for famous. Uh, 50 years. Well, I was going to say, in the 70s, I think was Happy I Days. Mean, he didn't do too much. He did Arrested Development. Yeah, he did Arrested Development. But yeah, I think the Water Boy, like in the late yeah. 90s, kind yeah. of broke open Arrested Development. He was in Parks and Rec. Obviously, we um, know Barry. Yeah. He's, he's done a ton of cameos everywhere. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It just, the he was part- in like all the Law and Orders and like those one-off random. Oh, Parks and Rec. Yeah. 
I totally forgot he was in Parks and Rec. But, but dude, just from being the Fonz, yeah. and like he's so insanely famous, and he must have been, I mean, constantly hassled by people for his fame and pictures yeah. and stuff. And to be that nice all the way, the whole time. The whole way. The whole way. Mentally ill nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my like, God. You know you what's know, funny? You, you could just of... be even, and not, you know, you didn't have to go above and beyond to yeah. talk to Kenny. Now, think about it. We've not all, worth it. We had always. <laughs> Damn, we, right? we had always. I always heard, now up until, I'll say up until maybe five years ago, I had always heard that Bill Murray would have been sort of close to the same category as like a Henry Winkler, but it's been unraveling. Lo, you bring he's, up a good point. He's, he's not doing weird. it all the way to the end. Chevy yeah. Chase, you know, maybe early on, you oh. heard good things about Chevy, but that guy's an a-hole. Oh, so yeah, it's like the they, the, you know, they don't, they can't take it to the end. No, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Will John Cena take it to the end? The chat room said, uh, goes to Manute Bull in our Twitch chat room, and you can join us every day on Twitch. Bob Zagat was like that. Twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan Live or YouTube, YouTube.com slash at Tom and Dan Live. Um, yeah, uh, you think John Cena will take it to the grave being uh, super nice? I think he will. Depends. I, I mean, because uh, if you're mentally ill nice, I think he is. you take it to the grave. And then uh, it, it also a big... Now, John Cena may not be as famous as uh, Henry, Henry Winkler for as much time. You know, because he may, as soon as he loses his muscles and stuff, like, not going to, uh, you think they'll still do cameos, John know. Cena? I mean, Hulk Hogan sort of does. I guess he'll he never is, lose his yeah. muscles. Yeah. He's addicted to it. He's right? got the I mean, stigma, though, right? Hogan, you know. A lot of people say that about nice. Tom Hanks, that he's just a genuinely yeah. nice guy as well. And I think the difference is people like Tom Hanks and Henry Winkler, their roles aren't portraying them to be really terrible people whereas john cena like yes he's a good guy in wrestling but you know he's done uh, a peacemaker where he's cursing a lot and he's done these other yeah, roles yeah. where he is acting like a jerk so maybe people don't get that same feeling with him as they would the Fonz or tom hanks yeah, has yeah. henry winkler and i'm sure he has has he ever played a villain it, I, like i said i brought about the law and order i think he was like the the twist bad guy in one of the law and orders that he was in because because there's the an argument I could make here that because he's so beloved and we've liked him so much that if he got a big role and played it, it would be terrifying just because of the precedent he set. Mm, that's true. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, we all know him and we know he's a good actor. So if you found the perfect role for him, like I'm talking big blockbuster because he's he's big and you slid him in there. I think he could do it. You know, I could definitely do it. Robin Williams. I, I, think, I was literally about too. to say Robin Williams. Everyone was like, "Oh, goofy actor. He's Popeye. He's Mork." And then he does, you know, uh, uh, with a photo uh, one. Yeah. Well, one hour photo. Fo- Goodwill Hunting, where he's yeah. a dramatic actor. He yeah. does the yeah one hour photo. He's it's terrifying. Oh god, he was weird with yeah. the shaved blo- bleach blonde Eminem hair. Yeah. in that movie. Do you oh, remember that? Creepy. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't there another movie where he was in Alaska and it was like daylight all the time? Um, there's something like that. I yeah, yeah. I think I remember uh, something where, like that. Where he played like some killer. Anyway. What? Anyway. Uh, uh, XFL. Insomnia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there it is. Man, um, you nailed it. You so, said it was light all the time. and he, Was he the killer? Oh my God. Uh, I think the, and then I always the get light it, drove him crazy. I always get it mixed <laughs> up in Patch <laughs> Adams. The yeah, unfortunate yeah. man Cancer bl- blows his head <laughs> off, right? No, blows his wife's head off. What does the unfortunate man do? What do you mean? Patch what? Adams? In Patch Adams. He's, he's a uh, doctor no, that makes no, kids no. happen. No, I think the or unfortunate happens. man with the shotgun blows his head off or something in Patch Adams. I uh, only remember bathing in the bowl of noodles. Like the old lady that just wanted to bathe in noodles. Well, you're just watching porn. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about Patch Adams. There's a special guy. With a shotgun that blows the... <laughs> We've been over this before. Yeah, I mess it up all the time. Um, so Somebody look that up and send me what happens in Patch Adams so I can... Did Winkler charge for yeah, every did. photo? Yeah. Is the transaction lot? in front of him or is no. it a different place? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's your thing. <laughs> so it was not in front of him. Uh, the transaction can either buy it online and okay. then you have... Yeah, like that's the, better. Just you, do it online so nobody has to see it. Yeah, and, yeah. You have, and you have the QR code it's to go in there. like buy direction or, pills. Just uh, do it online. If you do go there, there is like a stand where you walk up, you pay for it, and again, get the QR code. So when you wait in line, they just scan the QR code. Code know that you go in there, and then when you're done with the photo, you wait, and then they print it out for you, and clearly you know that that's you. 
So yeah, you don't have to give How him any money. How much is old Wink would charge? He eighty bucks a photo, mm. and and you can have as many people as you want. So that's could I, you have him wear a leather jacket? <laughs> he was wearing what he wore. You could wear a leather jacket. Was he jacket. just wearing like a suit? No, he was just wearing like a button up shirt and jeans. He looked just like an old grandpa, just like Jay Leto. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know what's a horrible situation for a nice guy uh, is that when Wait, there's are a, you the nice guy? <laughs> 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 you know what's a horrible situation? <laughs> well, I I'm just. I don't want to talk. People are like, oh, Tom, man. I don't have uh, as much as Winkler has, but uh, I have enough to understand. You're the- Orlando's Winkler. I've heard people <laughs> kick that around. The awkwardness of. He has pe- jumped sharks before. People waiting in line. Now, nothing oh God. compared. That was really, really good, Kenny. <laughs> do you remember when Fonzie jumped the shark? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Um, Just checking. I remember the joke which caused the, the phrase. phrase jump the yeah. shark, which is him jumping over. Like uh, a shark. shark Actually, when I go back and watch that episode, I like it a lot. (laughs) Uh, It it. it's not even dangerous at all. It's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> because okay, don't, don't get on that. The hot don't motorcycle. Get that. Don't get on that. I'm just saying. It's a, it's a motorcycle. I would say point. jumping no. into cardboard boxes yeah. isn't but dangerous. The either. hot ass engine. Go so with the shark your... is going to be freaking out. It's not going to bite you. He was on a. Uh, he was he's on skis. skis. So you don't oh, even know. He never saw it. He you never don't saw even know it. the episode. <laughs> Just go with your uh, original he, point. He's he jumping in a motorcycle? Don't let no. him go off. He's going off. He was be, he was I being, never saw it. I knew it. I've never seen it. <laughs> I'm younger than you, and I've seen it. He was being towed on a jet, or like by a jet ski or a boat, and he was on he skis. He was skiing. And he used the skis up a ramp and over a thing of sharks. Yeah, he jumped over a thing of sharks. Hold on. So he's water skiing. And in a ju- leather jacket. And then he yes. jumped. Uh, the, where was the sharks? In Above a, a lake? No, in like a... In pull, a da- pull it Oh, up, it's yeah. in the ocean? It's going to be so much easier. So they corralled the sharks with nets. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, how he wants to know the technicalities of this. How did we get on this? Oh, my how God. How did they do it? It is only a 30-minute sitcom, Tom. I don't think they have the ability <laughs> well, to explain. What? All right. Oh, yeah, let me uh, see this. Hold on. I got it. Yeah, it looks like it was all okay. buoy- buoyed off. <clears throat> All right, here we go. This is from 1977. This is Happy Days, episode five, (laughs) third season. That's crazy. It was the third season. You realize it's a TV show, right, Tom? Look at him, leather jacket. Yeah, look at those coochie cutters. They got Richie driving the boat. Oh, that was Matt Damon. (laughs) Oh, there's a shark. Okay, here he goes. Is that a great white? Richard's driving the boat. Fonzie's got his leather jacket on. He's going to oh, use oh, the yeah. ramp to jump the sharks. We so, should recreate this. I was going to say, someone say we're jumping the shark right now. <laughs> oh, I'm a good skier. Are you sure you want to do it? Uh, well, he's coming about it the wrong way. Like, you're going to need to whip yourself around. You can't just go straight. <laughs> he's going to do it? No, hold on. Push pause. Oh, oh my on, god, I can't believe we're oh, analyzing Is he right. whipping into it? <laughs> because, hold on. He's whipping into <laughs> you know, it. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> everybody's seen how a ski jumper. No. Jumps Why do you a... say things like that all the time? You're like, everybody <laughs> knows how ski jumpers. <laughs> everybody no. has seen this epi- this Tom, scene except for you. Yeah. Tom, not many people know how to angle their skis to jump I've over never sharks. Even seen is that before. what you're trying to say? No, no, I Everybody don't... knows how ski jumpers <laughs> approach a ramp. Nobody knows that. Not that they know. Well, I'm just saying they've seen a ski jumper. Yeah, but right? they're not going to remember how to do it. <laughs> like, they, you have to whip yourself no, from the other end. Nobody's going to know how to do it. <laughs> you that. can't just go at it straight. <laughs> He's going yeah. at it straight. Uh, you thought it was motorcycles. I've always, I've never known. Knew that it was just yeah. Here, here, here he goes. I thought it was. I do appreciate the the 1970s bikini top, but like shorts. Yeah. How could you accept the challenge? It wasn't me. It was you. I know. I know. Potsy and what were their names? I don't remember. I don't know, but the studio audience. Ralph Mouth. Ralph Mouth and Potsy. It's a lot of uh, B-roll here. Yeah, you gotta build the suspense here. Why even have him wear the here he goes. life jacket uh, thing? Here well, it's to promote safety, Tom. Just because you're a cool man in leather jacket. I um, think the weight belt is really just to accentuate the leather jacket. Here he goes. Yeah. Uh, he was not even close to going fast enough. Oh, he had a real ski jumper jump it, though. And, uh, yeah. And apparently. Yeah. So, and, and if you notice, all the sharks were corralled in that little buoy yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. The buoy area about right. the size of the studio. Wow, you know what? That's one of the most impressive stunts I've ever seen. Did you, did you ever do anything that great? Probably On national not. television? Probably not. I, if it was a real great white in there, 
then I would say it was dangerous because that may actually. Is there anything you else you can put in there? Why not just <laughs> jump a uh, kiddie pool filled with pit bulls? Right? And I'd be, oh, you'd kill most of them just by landing, landing on in them. them? Yeah, yeah, and they'd be uh, scream crazy. Like, I don't think Tons they're... of them. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Welcome God. to Corporate Time. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, de- hold on. Welcome to Corporate Time. It's the show. <sighs> Have you ever listened to our show? I listened yeah, to it the other I, day. I listened to it last night. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's I what I like, said. Who does this? <laughs> Who allows this to be on the air? And, um, the radio audio is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> why, is no, sound, yeah. why is it sound different? Yeah, why is it Because our different? podcast audio is good, yeah. but then it sounds like a tin can static. Yeah, thing. well, that's, uh, that's radio <laughs> for you. Hey, Canadian Josh is here, everybody. Let's play his hey, intro. Gang. He wanted to hear it. it. Oh, Canada, home of George St. Pierre, Tom's pop pop call. play that anymore. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Is it, is it problematic? Is it the gay Mexico comment that makes that problematic? Well, it's probably I don't mo- know. I don't know. I mean, like... That's fine, right? Uh, Mexico is pretty... Uh, uh, it's not a good place right now, right? They're having some... Really? Oh, What's happening, yeah. though? Well, there's, they're finding bodies everywhere at every resort. Like, every they're day when I go to check the news, Kidnapping and it's trying like, to force people yeah. to have uh, relations with their relations. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't, you didn't that hear that one. story? No, I didn't hear that oh. one. The one. The last one I heard was like, we just found four random bodies. I'm but like, it, okay. Yeah, they're popping up everywhere. It's, it's all cartel related. Though, it right? is, yeah. but it's normally in like smaller towns that have more cartel presence. They still have resorts there and stuff like that. But it's getting yeah. closer to like your main areas of like your Cancun and areas like that. And that yeah, is Playa del Carmen. I saw there. Was, yeah. Although I did hear somebody say once it's not exclusively cartel. Uh, sometimes it's people. It's uh, people from U.S. or Canada. If they've got, you know, they want to get rid of their lover or their wife, kind of like the cruise ship. Is that oh, that's, that's a yeah, common yeah. thing too? Like, yeah, it's yeah. not always cartel. Oh, they go down there. And oh, there was like, that whole group of friends that, uh, yeah, well, that, that allegedly was, maybe well, killed that their for, friend, and they're not even going to extradite them. Oh, I thought that was for like that lady wanted to get a BBL or something. That was a different one. Oh, that was a di- there's so much going yeah, on. Yeah, there's there. a lot. Yeah. I guess if you're going to go somewhere and then murder your friend and then yeah. you say like my friend got murdered and like well where where what happened? I'm like I'm in Mexico. You're like oh, yeah, uh, definitely the cartel. <laughs> it makes <laughs> yeah, sense. Right? It does it does make you go one notch lower. Like ah, and they don't even investigate it. They're like of course that yeah. happened. Yeah, uh, it's wh- Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which. Uh, Again, I think if you're just a tourist, I think you're safe, right? Uh, unless you have a boyfriend or girlfriend I mean, or a husband or wife that hates you. I think for the most part you are safe. Like I had some really good friends that just went to Mexico and went to a resort with their child and partied and had a great time and they were fine. Oh, yeah. So I think you can choose to believe that every resort there, you know, you have to be looking over your shoulder and that you, you know, the gunmen are coming to get you. Or <laughs> you'll, I yeah, think, like, why would they come and get yeah, me? I think you'll be just fine. But I, I think with most media, but, they sensationalize it and they like putting the word resort in there because they know it's going to get your cockles up. Yeah, they yeah. know you're going to be like resort. I've been to a Mexican resort. Am I going to get killed? It's like the cartel is in the drug business. They're not in the tourism killing business. <laughs> like, typically what a, they're not. They're in the ransom they, business. <laughs> yeah, typically Yeah, yeah but most people, uh, they you can't get ransom. Uh, that's a big, messy... It's easier to sell heroin or fentanyl than... Or people. Start ransoming well, I mean, off people. I think the know. point is, though, is that I don't think that this is what they normally do. But yeah, we're hearing a lot about it. So what were you saying, Josh? Um, yeah, well, the reason I was, uh, we were talking about Mexico and my theme song there. And if I have any say in the matter when it comes to theme songs, Dan, I've heard you toying with the idea of getting rid of the Weird Job Wednesday theme. Okay. Can I please put my vote on Keep It? I love that song. Okay. I mean, like, I just, like, I, I've, I'm running into a bit of inspiration problems with, like, doing more of the parodies of the Weird Job Wednesday theme song. In fact, I don't even know the original uh, lyrics without listening to it again and writing them down. That's how old I feel. So I'll have to. <laughs> 
write those down, but yeah, I want to start like kicking it around again, and we'll keep the original. We'll or keep it. Should we get rid of it? We've been doing it for a long time. I Are would like to kill the bit. I am tired of it. I'm, how many more air traffic controllers can we have? I mean, my They God. like that oh, one. Yeah, but they're all, oh, look, hey, we have a trainer. <laughs> the, sh- the trainer was a bust. I'm just going to be on. Everybody's mad at her because she was like, I don't believe in gastric bypass. And all the fat people were like, no. <laughs> yeah, she didn't say that. Uh, she totally did say, she just said, I, don't I don't believe in that. No, she just said, I'd rather people not choose surgery as their right. first option and try. Which is a nice way of saying she doesn't okay. believe in gastric bypass. And I will, the, the BDM that had gastric bypass. I do bypass, think gastric bypass is lazy. That <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. Well, okay. I'm well, joking. I, the, he's going to get mad at me because uh, I, yeah, I read his post. When he's, he's lost he's like mad what, at, 140 pounds, 150 pounds. He's like, uh, he, he was like, you know, she said, uh, you know, not, it's not an option. Uh, that shouldn't be for everybody or whatever. But he's like, I, you know, the reason it was for me is because I couldn't stop eating. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like... <laughs> Well, I almost laughed out loud. I don't want to say that. Well, because I was like, well, you you can physically probably stop eating, right? I was like, right? right. Yeah. I, Hold on. I'll do like, it. it was, I can understand. It was like, he should have went with, I have some sort of chemistry that doesn't, it, I don't chemistry. burn. Well, no, it's like I don't burn calories as fast as other people. Oh, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that one. Where you're like, I'm different. <laughs> I'm like, unique. Uh, pituitary. Just say something else. Always then. claim pituitary. <laughs> like, I couldn't stop eating. <laughs> no, you know what like, the big one is? You know what you say? And nobody will say anything. It's like it's like telling people your kid's got to play. Like, hey, you want to go to lunch? And you go, oh, no, I got to go to a kid's play. If you say yeah, that, yeah, yeah, you get yeah. out of everything. This is the one you say. Thyroid. <laughs> yeah, if you, thyroid. If you go something, th- say it's something. Thyroid every single time. You say thyroid, people are like, oh, and they won't even ask. Yeah, they, oh, they don't even know what a thyroid is. No, no. <laughs> I don't know what a thyroid <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah. I just think it's a lesser hemorrhoid. I don't know what a <laughs> thyroid is. It's a hemorrhoid on your thighs. I don't know. Yeah, no idea. Because when no you, idea. Because when you say that, I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, very oh, unfortunate. I'm so sorry. I'm uh, sorry, but I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your thyroid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta say something thyroid. other than I just couldn't stop eating. <laughs> like that's why I got a whole because that you're the you know that was her point is like maybe you should do other things besides the surgery. But I'm not saying that she said. <laughs> yeah, it. she said it. So <laughs> villainize her. I'm not saying anything. Get her. <laughs> Don't get me. Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't need gastric okay. bypass. Sam, cut um, all this out. <laughs> <laughs> Including make my a, hair loss. Yeah, <laughs> make, a, make a note to talk about the uh, to edit out hair loss and also gastric <laughs> bypass. <laughs> yes, Josh. Um, we were talking in the warm up about EJ a bit, my quote unquote arch rival. Although EJ yeah. and I, we've kind of reached a uh, a watchful piece right now. Oh, really? A couple of weeks ago. Uh, ben Bungie called in and called me out, said yeah. I'm not really Canadian. He said he's, but he said, I'm from Canada. I'm from Alberta, Canada. He's not from, like, have you guys heard any follow up from Ben Bungie? No. Have you heard a word from him since 2000? No, he's crazy. He, he, comes he, calls in, me. he calls in like once every three years. He'll call in, he'll leave some sort of cryptic message. And then he drops the mic. Yeah, yeah. he'll scream and then he'll leave. At one time, he was sending us bungees and giving us money. And I <laughs> wish he'd continue to do that, but I can't find him. I don't think he ever gave us money. I think he just gave us the bungee. Bungies. Or did he give us money? I thought he gave us money. He gave us a little one bit check. of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like one check for 800 bucks. I was like, oh what? my God. Yeah. He got the, the bungee got money. Yeah, he gave us some <laughs> money. Know. He gave us some money and then some bungees. And then and then he, he got us like interested in him. And then he left us. Yeah, yeah, disappeared. And yeah. I, was, I was like, how am I supposed to market this bungees? <laughs> or like, yeah. where do I. Yeah, then he calls in and claims he's Canadian. Like, you guys heard his accent. He's not Canadian. Well, I mean, like, it's not just based on where you're, like, where you're from and how you There's sound, right? There's also some right? hillbillies in Canada. Yeah. All seen but his accent, Canada. though, like, he's straight out of the hills of Georgia by the sounds of him. Like, I mean, can you pick that yeah. stuff up, though? Like, he, he, could... well, he was from Georgia. It was Ben Bungie from Georgia. I it was George. Yeah. I thought he was from Georgia. I, mean, I don't know. People call in and lie to me. I've been doing this so long, Josh. I don't even care what people tell me. Yeah, stuff. Yeah. I just go along with it. And then I end of the day, I close my computer, I go home. Yeah. Okay? That's all I do. <laughs> I, do you want me to vet all of our callers? You want me to vet Ben Bungie? Yeah, because I remember when he said he was from Georgia the first or time he called in. did he mean him. he lived in Georgia now? Yeah, I don't know. He that could be a... from Canada and lives in Georgia, and then he picked up the accent, right? Like, if I came to live with you in Canada, Josh, for a couple of years, would I end up sounding a little more Canadian when I left? I think so, yeah. It takes longer, though, right? A couple of years? I mean, are you asking or are you telling? <laughs> well... Because I, I don't. <laughs> I think as an adult, if you live like uh, like you live in uh, England, well, right? British you, people they come here and they still sound British for a bit, a long time. 
But then, unless you do it as a kid, you come here as a kid, then it, it, it transitions away. But as an adult, I don't think your okay, accent disappears. Here's what I think. I think if you're right? American and you, okay, if you're British and you come to live <laughs> in the States, you keep your accent because it's authentic. If you're American and move to England, you I think you kind of end up faking the accent because you want to have it a little bit. So there's subconsciously, I think there's work being done in the background of your brain because how many different Madonna, all these different people that live in England a little bit. We used to have somebody that worked here. You know, go back to England, next thing you know, oh, hey, mate, hey. <laughs> he was from England. Yeah, right. he, I know, yeah. but like he never talked. You turn it on and off. He never talked with a British accent. And then next thing you know, he's living in England for a minute and he's like, next thing you yeah, like a chimney sweep. Yeah, but I know people sweep. like that here where they... they they used to live somewhere else, and they had a really thick country accent, and then it kind of went away. And if they go back and visit family, they'll come back with a thicker accent. It's I do it in a Virginia. Weird thing. I do it in Virginia. It's like a psychological thing, I guess. I get that yeah, southern, yeah. that lot of mercy, out of clay, or but I, Virginia sound. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, Dan Lee, you're growing like a weed. Everything's like stretched out, all the words. Canadian Josh, what's going on? Well, he's got beef well, with Ben Bungie. <laughs> well, I had beef with Ben, but safe to assume we're not going to hear from Ben Bungie for another I don't, six months. We I have like no keep idea. This going, you know, we have no way to contact you, Ben I mean, Bungie. if I were yeah. you, I would abandon yeah. the beef. Because, I mean, he won't, he won't uh, be back. Who knows when I, he'll bungee back around? Yeah, yeah, we never know. I didn't even know he <clears throat> still listened to oh, the God. show. You know, I didn't I'm know like, he was still alive. Yeah, I didn't know he was still alive. Yeah, like uh, the, uh, Daniel's right. Every three years we hear from him and then never again. He'll pop in, say he's still listening, and then that's it. What else you got going on, John? Samantha, yes? you're coming to Canada. I am next year. And you're year. going to Quebec City, correct? I am. What should when I do? When is that taking place? Uh, next July, next summer. Next summer, okay. I, I was doing a little research for you. So uh, some French phrases you have to learn. All right. The first thing you need to learn is SQDC, Société Québécois de Cannabis. Those are the stories you want to find. And there's like six of them in Quebec City. So you'll be good there. All right. <laughs> Well, we got that here, Josh. Yeah, got, it's not even special anymore. Canada? You don't need to go to Canada to Do get marijuana. Do they got more quality stuff in Canada? Well, yeah, Tom, you were talking about edibles before. We just got those. Um, you guys might have these. They're like the Listerine breath strips. Yeah, we got those. Like, you guys have those? Yeah, yeah we, we got, got everything, We got all Josh, the stuff. We got on. it all. It's Look, it's money, Josh. We got it all. Now when I go to Colorado, I just bring the weed from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, uh, because it's, it's too much. It's cheaper in Colorado. Uh, well, it depends which part you go to, I guess. I already have the pills. Yeah, we're rich. <laughs> we already bought all this stuff. But, uh, but also, I haven't found it. Like, I did buy some, uh, like, cheap chews and it was relatively the same price. Uh, yeah. You know, especially because it's recreation. You know, they, they taxed the hell out of it. Marijuana when I eat it, especially a chibichu, it instantly dries my mouth, and then it never gets wet again, ever. <laughs> it just dries to the point of ultimate dry. There's no, there's nothing special about marijuana anymore. Now that yeah, we, now I think that I'm gonna quit. <laughs> no, no, I'm not I even like, into it anymore. It's everywhere. I, Everybody's into it. Well, it's, it's not just, even cool anymore. You go to the store and you buy it. Yeah. And there, there's stores everywhere. Are you on the marijuana, Josh? Oh, yeah, but we don't need the card. I guess that's probably the last hurdle for you guys that's in terms nice. of the novelty of it. Like, you, could you still have to go through some sort of medical process in Florida? Yeah, because yeah, it's not, it's not yeah. federally legal. I mean, I, I, medical. I go and sit in Shen Latte's office, and then he just gives it, you know, hey, a bit of professional. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Very professional. That is professional, but I'm just saying it's not really a process. You just have to go to an office for 10 minutes once every seven months. I guess it's kind of a pain in the ass, and you yeah, got to pay I mean, for a car. Once you get to the point where there's no more doctor's office, Office where it's just like walking in and buying a Snickers yeah. bar. That's I think the last hurdle. They just like yeah. get there. Or like for good you, as it is now? like It'll when you when you go to do it. Correct me if I'm wrong. You just go in, you give them your ID, and you're good to go. Yeah, and that's and pretty cool. I'd have a good ID because I'm an old man. So yeah, you just walk in, and, yeah. and it's at the liquor store. It's the same place they sell beer and wine. And that's booze. really cool. Do they limit the percentages any differently in Canada? Kind of like they did. Didn't they do that with beer with you guys? Yeah, the lim- basically nothing is stronger, like for one unit, whether it's an edible, is stronger than 10 milligrams. But you can buy, you know, 10, 10 milligrams if you want. Yeah, they don't right. have like 50. You hear those crazy Oh, you don't get 50s? In, oh, I got 50s right now. You guys can get 50s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I looked up. Big uh, 50s. I looked up because I was like, you know what? I've never done any sort of research on marijuana <laughs> whatsoever. I yeah. better see what this or stuff's on about. Anything. <laughs> and then I <laughs> see what this weed that I've been taking for the last five years is all about. I looked up, like, how many milligrams of marijuana or THCs should you take a day? It's right? like two. 
And no, no. And then, and then I, uh, the first thing that came up was on Google, and it said like, uh, someone recommends <laughs> it was doctors or whatever. You should, you only should take forty milligrams a day at the most. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's why I take fifty. And then I was like forty. I was like, well, well, I don't. And then I looked up like, what happens if you take more than forty milligrams? And then it said nothing. <laughs> How many milligrams do you take uh, typically, Tom? I, I right around uh, forty. But you have a whole 40, process, oh, wow. right? You do like ten when you leave, ten when you get home, ten before bed, ten in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, like, don't yeah. you like tell me your because mine tens. is I I go to mine is I go home. Uh, normally, don't do anything. Maybe I hide in the bathroom, toot toot toot, get a little uh, uh, head toot. Then How many I, milligrams is the toot? Yeah, toot, how much do you get off a toot? I, I don't know. I do three full pulls. The the it's like I don't know, fifteen seconds, and then I blow out like what appears to be a Kirby sized <laughs> cloud of smoke. <laughs> you do three fifteen, <laughs> three fifteen second pulls. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's like five. It's like okay. one second a pull or something. I don't know. I do the three, uh, and then no, I do that, and then that's it. And then I wait until bedtime, and then right before I go to bed, a hundred fifty milligrams. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah, right before I go to bed, I take uh. it, and then I feel myself. <laughs> Melting into the bed. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Three fifteens. Oh man, it's a lot. Yeah, the mini trucking of weed. It's, full, it's a full pull. You know, like I don't know what it is. It's the the true. What are those things called? The true stick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it vibrates, and that's a pull. So if you're sucking on your, it'll go. <laughs> and that's how, it. How many? That's it. That was the three. milligrams. Is a. Z- uh, I think a zoot is <laughs> 0.5 milligrams. So I think oh, okay. that's a zoot, zoot right? Yeah. Well, that's nothing. I think I'm, yeah, the, the head smoking, the smoking, the head high, that's nothing. Okay. But then later, when it's time to go to bed, so I don't wake up because of the nightmares I have. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, literally, I mean, going to bed and waking up are the two most excruciating things that I do. Like, going to bed <laughs> as, as if you are killing my entire family, and waking up. As if you're forcing me to watch you kill my entire family. It's horrifying. Like, every day? Every day. Like, every oh, wow. morning when I wake up, I wake up nauseous and um, wanting to throw up. That's Man, are you more crazy in the morning or in the night? Personally, I'm more crazy in the morning as far as crazy level goes. Yeah. I'm a morning crazy person. Not a I night. think most people are, yeah. At night, I'm pretty good because I can get a shower, do a little self-care. Get in my You're jammies. Medicated, yeah. Yeah, do some stretches, do some yoga, something like that. Tuck myself in the bed, get my puppy. But in the morning, I'm like, oh my God, what happened? What's happened overnight? What happened? Is it that you waked your anxiety yeah. conscious brain yeah. and then it's been in a slumber and then all yeah. of a sudden it wakes up uh, on yeah, terrible terms? That's, that's actually go. quite a decent uh, uh, explanation. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's a pretty good description of what happens. It's like uh, it's science. Your old truck is the loudest right when it starts. I mean, that's, <laughs> why, takes a while truthfully, you... <laughs> that's why truthfully I've been mulling it over. I just don't think I could do it, Josh. I've actually been mulling over getting rid of caffeine just because I'm edgy all the time without it. You know, I don't even need it, but yeah. you know, I just like I'm God. always tapping my feet. I'm always you know anxious, and I just I want to see if I can get rid of that. I just I I'm tired. Yeah, I'm yeah, tired yeah. of being anxious <laughs> all the time. Like it's killing me. Uh, I'm exhausted. Well, it's what, like I. It's like one my, day you won't be anxious. I know, but it's like my brain is exhausted and anxious, but still anxious. But my body is just like I can't do it anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die soon. Like that's what it feels like. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know what's making me crazy and anxious, and that is NHL playoffs. You guys into the uh, both Florida teams are in the uh, playoffs this year. You guys start watching. You yet? know, I was last year, but this year because of baseball starting and just so much going on with the show, I haven't gotten into hockey, which sucks because I love playoff hockey. Playoff hockey is crazy. Yeah, and this is, I guess it's a good problem for me to have my team. Uh, I mentioned it before, I'm a Boston Bruins fan. So they've set the all-time NHL record uh, for regular season wins, most home wins, uh, first uh, win the President's Trophy, the earliest. Like, they've broken, like, so basically the entire hockey world is already giving my team the Stanley Cup. But to me, that's a problem because I'm just like, would you guys be that same way? We'd just be like, yeah, we're winning the cup or would that cause you that same sort of anxiety? Like, oh, God, when are we going to screw it up? When are we going to screw it up? Yeah, usually the uh, heavy favorite, uh, that is a, uh, it's a tough, that's a hex. It's uh, tough, you know, yeah. when someone says like, oh, they're they're going to yeah. win for it, sure. It Look happens at, in the NFL every year. Uh, and then it's it, it's almost 
is a disadvantage because then you go into it with that, you know, yeah. like having the underdog mentality. I prefer they crapped all over the Falcons last year and we rose to the yeah. occasion. Not that bad. You know, yeah. like I was okay with that. Like going into any game, the odds on favorite, I feel like, is a uh, definitely a, a downfall to, uh, is, as opposed to going in there as the underdog. Like yeah. that gives you I a, think especially a light now advantage. With social media and the way that the, the, the news cycle runs, it's like people will never let you go away. You know, they don't even, they, like once you've been labeled, like, all right, they're going to win it, everybody's just waiting for you to fall. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. it feels like. And I hate that. That's exactly what's happening with our team right now. I mean, we are playing the Florida Panthers in the first round. In game one, half the team came down with, um, half the Bruins team came down with some sort of stomach flu. They all had diarrhea. They were puking. A couple of them didn't. Well, that's what Dan <laughs> they, had. But we still, we still Going beat around. Florida in uh, game one. So even at the disadvantage, with our captain out, with half the team sick and dehydrated, we still beat Florida. Nice. So. Well, Tampa congrats. Bay, though, is, uh, you guys would be probably more along Tampa fans. Yeah, uh, we, we'd be more yeah. Lightning fans over here. We're, too, yeah, we're closer to Tampa. Yeah, and they killed Toronto. They absolutely annihilated Toronto last night, which was impressive. So, go well, Tampa. Well, the, the Leafs are still trying to get through, right? The, Le- the Leafs are in, and they, like, they were the second-best team in the East. No, and, I mean, um, like, they're trying to get through to, to win the Cup. Yeah, they haven't won the Cup since 1967. Yeah, that. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's. I, I'd like to see it happen, honestly, and and I have a lot of friends that support that team, so that would be fun. Well, it looks like Tampa's going to be a thorn in their side because they smoked them last night in Toronto, like good seven to three. Oh, so. I didn't know it was in Toronto. That's not good. Yeah. yeah, it seems like there are a couple sports like soccer <clears throat> and hockey that uh, the it's hard to score goals, right? So, so hard. When you uh, hockey goals don't even look real to me. I don't even know how they see the angles or the the small little areas of space around the goal. I mean, that's a special type of eyesight. So I feel like the underdog in situation. We've seen this in soccer too, where if they score early, then <clears throat> they have a tremendous advantage yeah. because all of a sudden you start playing heavy defense, and yeah. even the superior team trying to score like. One inch off yeah. or <clears throat> some yeah. small problem. Like- it happened to Arsenal last week. You know, they, they well, they, it was the, actually the opposite. I mean, the opposite can happen where the, 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 uh, the overdog, if you want to call it that. The favorite, yeah. Yeah, the favorite goes over. I was trying to, to channel my uh, Kevin uh, Hart from that commercial. <laughs> um, the, you, you can go up early, and then it gives the other team the, well, we don't care, we can come back mentality. So it can work the opposite direction. Arsenal went up uh, 2-0, and then the underdog team was like, well, screw this. We have nothing to lose. We'll throw everything at you to get level, and they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yes, there are plenty of times when the underdog can go up early, and then it kind of demoralizes the favorite a bit. Sucks the air out of the room. Yeah, and it's like, you know, even though you're better, scoring goals are hard. So, you know, you're still playing a professional team and a professional goalie, and uh, if you're not exactly... Uh, you know, kick the ball or uh, hit the puck in the right, you know, just yeah. you know, it bounces off the pole. Like, you, the little, there's a game of uh, centimeters. Yeah, Josh, are you going to any games, or do you just watch it on TV? No, man, we went to a regular season game. That's, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Dan, because they were talking about, um, like, like, hockey in their PR endeavors. They always say, you know, make hockey for everyone. I did look at um, game one of the, uh, game one and two in Boston against Florida. Nosebleed tickets. I mean, you can reach up and touch the rafters. We're starting at sixteen hundred dollars oh per ticket. God. Wow! For nose, it's I, who can afford to go to these games? Uh, I, I I can't. Like even when I went regular season, I paid three hundred U.S. per ticket for me and Little Cheese. Damn, they were good seats. So you know, I was like well over six hundred. Man, Josh, I got Josh. I got to tell you, bro. I did not know hockey tickets were that expensive. I was actually thinking because May enjoys watching Lightning games, and we loved going to the Solar Bear games when we were working with them here in town. And I was like, well. Shoot, we'll just shoot up the road and hit one of these Tampa Lightning games. But I don't think I'm not paying. Well, not playoffs. You can, you're not going to be able but to. Play I'm playoffs. still. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's a regular season. I'm not paying 300 bucks a ticket. Yeah, this was playoffs in Boston too. Yeah. They're okay. going to be one of the most, you know, because they're sold out, you know, for sure. years and years. So that could have something to do with it. Good but Lord. I don't know who can afford these tickets. You may like ten thousand dollars a ticket. You could easily pay for lower bowl. Insane. Ten thousand dollars a ticket. You it's Americans are rich. Taylor you guys have all the ins- money. That's insane. <laughs> My God. It, I think, like, especially for championships, uh, the I it's become a bucket list thing for people. So, so they just throw money at it. <clears throat> they'll 
They'll pay. Man, Put it on their know. credit card. Oh, see, you took that extra sip. Yeah, I told yeah. you not to. It's too wet. <laughs> yeah, uh, did you get it too wet? Uh, no, no. It's just we. You know what it is? We went from z- not talking at all yesterday. yesterday I know. And well, I did. I talking. talked the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, that's what you need to do. You need to keep up the talking. <laughs> I was singing. Like, I was talking. I was quiet, working fast as hell. Yeah, yeah you can't. Um, our um, our new B- Russian BDM, who's a doctor, he's actually diagnosed why you do that. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. No. Just don't talk about it. Well, what is he? He know. Uh, uh, he's is a doctor. This, is it a joke? Is this he's a joke? only a physician. What does he know? No, he says you drink too much caffeine. That's causing uh, esophageal reflux, which is causing a reactive airway. So it's basically your ass is coming up. That causes a reaction in your airway, and that's why your it makes ass you is coming up. Yeah, you gotta you gotta lose ass. So it's stop the drinking caffeine. the caffeine. Well, then yeah. well, how do I then how do I be funny? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to tell take me that, Doc. Caffeine pills with water or something? Right? No, 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 no. He's, he's saying the, eliminate the caffeine. Yeah, it's the caffeine. So even though it's liquid, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's pill form. Yeah, because it's causing reflux, which is causing the uh, reactive airway, yeah, yeah. and that's making you flat. What is a reactive right. airway? Aren't Cocaine, all, it is. Aren't all airways supposed to be reactive? If it's not, it's, it's not an airway. Oh, okay. Uh, so you right. take that under advisement, Tom. Do do what you want with that. Well, well, nothing. I knew that was happening. <laughs> well, so yeah, take tell that. Tell us something we don't know, Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was something I'm doing to myself. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. I'm like, it ah. wasn't anybody else. But I want to stop it. That's oh, the and Doctor Savelli, he also thinks he can beat up Seth. So I'll just throw that out there. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, he's like MMA guy. Savelli he was like uh, Olympic level um, kickboxer. So oh, he's like, oh let's yeah, set it up. Him. Let's so. set it up. How old is he? Uh, Savelli is 39. Oh, oh that's pretty, pretty evenly yeah. matched. Does What's, he still train, though? Every day. Yeah, every day. All right. I, I train with him sometimes, which is kind of scary. He almost knocked me out once. It was really scary. <laughs> oh, my God, Josh. <laughs> Seth did beat up Bob Sapp. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Bob Saget. <laughs> yeah, he beat up Bob Saget, and that's why Saget died. Oh, yeah. I knew it. Yeah. Which is, Seth, that's the most impressive thing that, in my mind, like, the Kimbo Slice yeah, thing. Yeah, Bob Sapp was a murderer, man. <laughs> that guy was well, a beast of a human. Even though he wasn't that good of a fighter, just as a human yeah, being, I'm just like, like how do you knock that guy down? Yeah, yeah, like, how do you even get in a ring with him and then say you're going to fight this yeah, person? Yeah, like, beat him up. He's a giant. Although Seth did lose, but it was because his arm was too yeah. weak. He uh, hit him so hard. He <laughs> hit so Bob Sacks. Uh, Bob Sackett. <laughs> he <laughs> hit Bob Sackett so hard it broke his arm, right? No, he dislocated, dislocated his shoulder. It, yeah. Yeah. Although, it's... Okay. You say no. although a lot. Well, because I'm, I thought about it, and sometimes wide receivers in the NFL, they don't catch a ball that's easy to catch, and then they get up and pretend like they limp off the field, like, oh, he must have been hurt, that's why. And yeah. then he's totally fine the next play. No, you think this. So, so it may be because he... You think he hit him, he's like, owie! <laughs> well, it's an easy way to get out of the fight if you th- maybe... You think he realized as he hit him, oh, man, this guy's <laughs> humongous. <laughs> well, maybe he gave him all he got, and then he's like, well, that was all of I- that I have. I'm just going to pretend my arm hurts now to get out of the fight. Okay, that we'll bring that up to <laughs> yeah, bring that up. It could be a possibility, right? You yeah. could act injured to get out of the fight. That's then you, true. You save face because you're like, I would have beat him if my arm didn't hurt. Yeah. Because that's what he says. I like that. Anyway. Canadian Josh, yes. what say you? Uh, yeah, Savelli said he's he could take it, but he couldn't do the – he's not into gra- the grappling end of things. He said as long as it was just straight-up kickboxing. Oh, stand-up. Just keep yeah, – yeah, stand-up we'll, we'll put up a stand-up bonus on uh, it. Uh, no grappling. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, – Grappling's for girls. <laughs> it, uh, it is the most boring. It's not for girls, but it is the most boring. Sorry, jiu-jitsu guys. Nobody wants to see it. <laughs> it is. It's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, it looks, yeah you can incapacitate yeah. people, sure. You can choke them out. I yeah, get it. Boring, yeah, but yeah. it's so boring. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what taught me that? Great, uh, Hoist Gracie. I remember watching the MMA fights way back in the late 90s, early 2000s. We'd be watching <laughs> the old school ones, and I'd be like, oh, God, another more of these grappling guys. Boring. <laughs> I want the big, fat truckers that just stand up and start punching each other in the face. 